motorcycle taxi ako papunta dito para umabot. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. This committee on this hearing on, of the Committee on Public Services is hereby called to order. Bago tayo mag-umpisa, um, manahimik tayo sandali at taimtim na alalahanin at ipanalangin ang ating mga kababayan na apektado ng pagsabog ng bulkang taal. Maraming salamat po. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of uh, our uh, Senator Ralph Recto. Ayon sa datos ng Land Transportation Office, mayroong humigit kumulang 18.8 milyong motorsiklo na bumubuo sa 71% ng rehistradong sasakyan sa bansa. Isa sa bawat tatlong Pilipinong may bahay own a motorcycle and 51% of them use it for livelihood. 51%. Accessibility, affordability, and the lack of more efficient mass public transport fostered a patronage for motorcycles as a means of transportation over the years. This is despite the fact that the Land Transportation and Traffic Code, otherwise known as RA4136, as amended, still classifies motorcycles as purely private vehicles. As early as 2018, the Senators have already called for the Department of Transportation to consider the legalization of motorcycle taxis in the same view it recognized new forms of transport services under Department Order Number 2015-11 to promote mobility. While they did not take this track, we appreciate that our transport agencies kept an open mind on the possibility of motorcycles for hire in the country and for spearheading a pilot testing program. No matter how convenient it is, we still have to consider the safety aspect, particularly since according to the recent Global Status Report for Road Safety of the World Health Organization, 54% of all road traffic deaths involve motorcycles, pedestrians, and cyclists. The established vulnerability of motorcycle as a mode of transportation calls for the government to step in. The purpose of this hearing is to craft a framework that would regulate motorcycle taxis. Through this, we can ensure the protection of not only the riders, but also the commuting public and all other vehicles on the road. Sa pagdinig na ito, gusto din nating bigyan ng sagot ang mga issue at problema ng pilot testing Gayun din ang mga pamantayan at paramet parametro na ginamit sa technical working group. Plansay natin ang mga gusot para maayos ang magiging rekomendasyon natin sa Kongreso. Like with our stance on the TNBS, this committee will always be forward-looking. It is about time that we harness the power of technology to help us address mobility issues. The government should therefore strike a balance between regulation and ensuring the public's need for a safe, comfortable, and reliable transportation. I implore all sides to look at the issues from each other's perspectives. With that said, I would like to ask the resource persons to introduce yourselves and then later on uh, take your oath and then uh, maybe an opening statement from Senator Recto. So let's begin with our resource persons from Mr. Gonzalez all the way around. Yes, good morning, Chairman. Uh, Leo Gonzalez, Head of Public Affairs for Grab. 
Good morning, Nika Hosaka, Public Affairs from Grab. James Seekin, I'm a transport journalist and advocate. Jin Lumibao from MDPPA. Edwin Gore representing the Motorcycle Dealers Association of the Philippines. Uh, Virgilio Montaño, I'm the technical committee chairman of our MDPPA. I'm Dennis Chen, uh, co-founder of Hitch With Us, uh, tap, Modern Taxi Meter. Good morning, Alexis Revilla from ESETGO Corporation. Good morning, Chairman. I'm Nolly Yala from Joyride, Philippines. Good morning, Eric Torres from Move It. Good morning, David Medrana, Head of Operation Angkas. Good morning, Bob, Madam Chairman, George Rieka um, from Angkas. Good morning, Your Honors. Uh, Police Lieutenant Colonel Darwin Paz from PNPHPG. Good morning, I'm Colonel Romel Cabangato of PHPG. Magandang umaga po, Alberto Suan Singh, DOTR Consultant. Magandang umaga po, Madam Chairperson, Senator Recto, Mark Stephen Pastor po, Assistant Secretary for the Department of Transportation and member of the TWG. Uh, magandang umaga po, Madam Chairman. Ako po si Board Member Antonio Garjola, ang nai talagang Chairman ng Technical Working Group. Maayong buntag. Uh, magandang umaga sa lahat. Uh, Martin Delgra, uh, Chair of LTFRB. Good morning po, uh, Ma'am Sir. Jojo Garcia po, uh, GMM of DA. Good morning, Your Honors. Uh, Edgar Gilbante, PLTO. Good morning, Your Honors. Connie De Vera po from the SEC. Good morning, Faye Condes de Sagon from the Philippine Competition Commission. Good morning, Michelle De Ocampo from the Insurance Commission. Uh, good morning, German Sibilla from Motorcycle Philippines and Safety Advocate. Good morning, Your Honor, Romy Magnusol of Solid Manila Riders Club, Chairman. Good morning po, Ryan Rivera from Tagig Spartan Family, Biker Group. Good morning, Madam Chairman and Capital S, Senator Recto, and the, put the panel, Rod Cruz representing the Arangkada Riders Alliance. Magandang umaga po, Adi Rinton from LCSP. Good morning, Madam Chair and all the uh, senators and everybody in the hall. I'm Elvira Medina, National Chair, National Center for Commuter Safety and Protection. Maganda umaga po uh, from UP, pero convener ng Move Metro Manila, Professor Grace Goros Pehamon. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Senator Rector. Eileen Lizada, former board member, LTFRB. Good evening, uh, Chair. Good evening, Senator. Good morning, Bala. Um, um, Tony Levinia, um, convener of Transport Watch and, and Law Professor. May we call on the Secretary to please administer the oath, and the Chair would like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Marcos. Yeah, may we request all our resource person to please stand up and raise your right hand and repeat after me. Hi. Please state your name. Do solemnly swear that I will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to this committee. So, thank you. Senator Recto, would you like to have an opening? Perhaps um, before we begin with our line of questioning, we would like to hear from uh, Major General. Guardiola, you said Guardiola, to please make an explanation if you have an opening statement. I, I heard you made a very controversial declaration this morning, canceling the technical working group. Kinancel na ninyo, di ba? Starting uh, we next week, kuhulihin ninyo lahat ng riders, tama ba yun? Uh, we recommended for the termination of the study. Okay, please explain yourself. Uh, magandang umaga po, Madam Chairman, mga kagalang-galang na Senador, na membro ng komitibang ito. 
mga imbitadong resource persons, kagaya po nang naihayag niyo kanina na itong pagdinig ngayong umaga ay nakapaloob sa pag-aaral kung ligtas ang motorsiklo bilang isang transportasyon para mag-atay uh, ng mga pasahero o isang alternatibo trans transportasyon. Ito po ang mandato ng Technical Working Group na pag-aaralan po kung ito nga po ay ligtas o ma isang magandang alternatibo na mode of transportation. Sa mga ito po, Madam Chairman, ang Technical Working Group po ay nakikiusap ng mga katanungan o pag-uusapan sa umagang ito ay ipaloob sa konteksto ng pag-aaral. Hindi po sa konteksto ng komersyo. Hindi po sa konteksto ng hanap buhay. Dahil hindi po yan nakapaloob sa mandato ng Technical Working Group. Yun lang po. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chairman. Teka muna. Hindi mo inexplika yung resulta ng pag-aaral ninyo. Um, gusto natin marinig ano ba naging resulta ng iyong pag-aaral na naging basihan ng inyong mga naging desisyon. So, doon tayo mag-umpisa, hindi sa kung ano ang minamandato mo sa komite na dapat gawin. Uh, Madam Senator, opo. Uh, yung, kung sa resulta po ng aming pag-aaral, kami po ay nag-umpisa, nag, uh, itinalaga, itinalaga po ako bilang chairman nitong December 19, December 19 po, kung saan pinag-umpisa namin uh, gumawa ng mga guidelines para ipatipad po sa mga magiging partisipante sa pag-aaral na ito. Uh, meron po kami mga guidelines, naglagay pa po kami ng CAP. Ngayon po, uh, habang, uh, habang in progress po ang pag-aaral natin, na kung saan po, ang isa po dyan ay pinaririhistro natin ang mga magpaparticipate po rito para malaman natin kung tama po talaga ang mga nagpaparticipate na mga riders dito sa pag-aaral na ito. Nagbigay po tayo ng CAP sa tatlong uh, napili po para magparticipate sa pag-aaral na ito. Kung saan naglagay po tayo ng 10,000 each sa Metro Manila sa 3,000 each sa Metro Cebu. Ito po, kung titingnan po natin sa nakaraan, meron po kasing CAP, yung dating technical working group, na 27,000 po. Uh, kung saan, ang partisipante lang po noon ay ang uh, angkas po. Ngayon sa bagong technical working group po nga na, na buo, dinistribute po natin, dinagdagan po natin ng 27,000 to 39,000. Kung saan paghati-hati ang... With the permission of the speaker and the chairman, ang uh, pagkaintindi ko na tinatanong ng ating chairman ngayon, unang-una sa lahat, ay ano yung naging pag-aaral ninyo simula nung no nag-umpisa? Itong technical working group, itong pilot testing ng uh, uh, motorcycle taxi. Yun ang pagkaintindi, na, pagkaintindi ko sa tanong. Salamat so, po. Uh, anim na buwan yan, di ba? Uh, sa kung sa aking ano po pagkakatalaga ay magdadalawang buwan pa lang po ako. No, hindi natin pinag-uusapan yung personal mo. Ang pinag-uusapan natin yung DOTR, meron tayong programa ngayon na pilot testing sa loob ng anim na buwan. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Sino yung unang head ng technical working group? Si Undersecretary Mark De Leon po. Nandito ba ngayon si Undersecretary Mark De Leon? Wala po, sir. Actually, um, yes. Senator Recto, we invited him, but apparently he was assigned by the DOTR to attend to another matter. But I think that's a good point that you're raising because uh, with the length of this study, actually, Yusek De Leon has spent more time on it, studying it. And then all of a sudden, his appointment was um, retracted. And I'd like to know what was the reason behind that also. And... Mr. Guardiola took over for just uh, since December, and after that he has this unilateral decision to to cancel the program. Um, 
Yung sa Guardiola, ito ba'y pinayagan ni Secretary Tugade na i-cancel na ninyo itong programa na to? Opo, ma'am. Uh, Na-endorso po sa Kongreso. Okay. Ganito yung tanong ko, ha. Uh, kasi alam ko yung pinag-uusapan sa news madalas ngayon, 30,000 yung CAP, 9,000 sa Cebu. Pero ang tanong talaga, sinasabi mo, ang dahilan ng inyong pag-aaral ay para makita kung ligtas ba ang motorcycle taxis. So, ang ibig sabihin, kinansel ninyo, ibig sabihin, para sa inyo, hindi ligtas. Ano bang datos ninyo? Ilan bang aksidente? Ngayon, kung sabihin na natin tatlong put siyam na libo ang mga mo motorcycle taxis dun sa pilot testing program ninyo, ilan ang biyahe niyan sa isang araw? Sa, sa biyahe nila sa isang araw, ilan ang aksidente nila? At anong porsyento ito ng kabuuan ng kanilang pamamasada? Kasi sabihin natin, alam mo ang aksidente, aksidente. Hindi naman natin sinasabi na isang daang porsyento, kahit naman sa sakyan, nagkakaroon ng aksidente, kahit anong sasakyan. So, ano po bang datos ninyo dyan? Meron ba kayong nakalap? Sa unang report po, nung unang TWG, ang binasihan lang po nila yung report ng angkas. Kung saan nagsasabi, nagsabi po sila ang angkas na 99% safe sila po. Sila po. So, wala pong sinabi ang, wala pong pang, na, pang counter doon yung TWG. Kaya nga po, ito ang pinapaliwanag ko ngayon para po malaman natin kung totoo po yung report na yon kaya po tayo naglalagay ng cap, kaya po tayo nagpinaririso natin ang mga riders na pina Teka, yung sa Guardiola, mali, uh, mawalang galang po, pero ang sinasabi ninyo, ang datos na meron kayo ay galing sa angkas, na 99% ang kanilang safety record. Opo. Di ba? Pero ngayon, kinakansela ninyo ang pag-aaral nito dahil sinasabi ninyo dapat ligtas ang ating mga kababayan. Hindi pa salungat yan sa... Ang recommendation po, ma'am, nung dating technical working group ay pahabain ang pag-aaral dahil wala po silang sapat na nakuhang informasyon o datos doon sa pag-aaral nila. Kaya po itong pagpapahaba ng pag-aaral, naglagay po tayo ng mga guidelines para ma-monitor po natin. Kaya nga, so ba't tinitigilan na ninyo yung programa? Kasi po hindi kami makagalaw because marami pong uh, legal impediments along the way. Hindi. Yung pong pag-re-require uh, namin sa paglagay po namin ng guidelines, hindi po sinusunod. Sino hindi sumusunod? Ang angkas po. Teka muna. Alam nyo, ang sinasabi ninyo kasi, ito'y pag-aaral ng kaligtasan. Opo. Ngayon, pag pag-aaral yan ng kaligtasan, kinakailangan kayong kumuha ng datos. Pwede naman ninyong kunin sa MMDA, pwede ninyong kunin sa mga mga ibang PNP uh, or yung mga highway patrol groups. So ba't hindi nyo nagawa yan sa loob ng anim na buwan? At kung hindi ninyo nagawa, obligado kayong ituloy yan. Hindi ba ninyo naisip na sa darating na linggo, pang manghuli kayo ng mga riders, either babalik yan sa pagiging illegal ng pagpapatakbo at yung ating mga kababayan mawawala ng alternatibong masasakyan. So, um, ano pong sagot niya? Ano pong ginawa ninyo para makalap ang mga datos ng pagiging ligtas? Sino kinausap? Nag-usap na ba ang MMDA? Kayo po. GM Garcia. Hi, good morning, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Actually, ang MMDA po nung una is part of the DWG, no? yung aming mga lawyers sa, sa traffic. As resource person only, no? we're just, we're not part of the uh, deciding group, but resource person. So we submitted everything to them. Ang pagkaitindi ko pa, mama, based sa pag-meeting yung report sa akin ng tao ko, is kaya na, na, natitigil yung TWG, which we support, no? Because hindi nga raw nakikisama ang angkas, kaya nagkagulo sila. Eh. They did some data. The problem is, hindi nga binibigay sa may mga violations daw. Kaya nga sabi ko, ano yung data na pwede namin ibigay to help them? Kasi if safety issue po talaga ang kukwestiyonin, We support ang kase sa MMDA side sa safety issue kasi may training yan. But lagi namin tinatalong is, how can you regulate no, yung motorcycle taxi na yan? Kung yung tricycle nga ma'am, tatlo gulong, LGO nagre-regulate. And then ito, dalawa lang ang gulong eh. So who will regulate it? Then next question naman is, ang tricycle ma'am bawal sa national road. Dapat, kung ipapasok natin ang angkas, sa secondary road din, not sa national road. Kasi hindi talaga pwede isabay ang, ang mga motorcycle, taxi, public uh, vehicle yan. Isasabay mo sa bus eh. 
Ano muna, ay, ganito ha, GM Garcia, ang tanong ko, anong datos ang nabigay ninyo? Ano, ilang aksidente, ilan ang tumatakbo? Okay. Yun yung kailangan. Yes. Na. Out of, uh, ang data po namin sa MMDA, ang registered motorcycles natin sa NCR is more than 1.2 million. Okay? In 2018, ang average accident natin, ano, nasa mga 73 per day. Pagdating ng 2019, no, meron na tayong nasa 27,000 accidents noong, noong 2019. Kaya lang, 7,000 ka for the year? Yes, these all are involving motorcycles. So 27,000 of 1.2 million, ilang percent yon yung mga magaling sa math dito. Pero I'd like to acknowledge first the presence of Senator Win Gachalian, and I'd also like to acknowledge the presence of our uh, Senator Pimentel, who is now celebrating his birthday. Happy birthday, sir. Happy birthday. Trabaho pa rin kahit may birthday. Um, Actually, it's less than 2.2% lang. 2.2%. Yeah. Okay. But the problem is we cannot identify kung alin ang angkas, ano yung private eh. Okay. Yung, yung, yung as a whole kasi uh -huh. ng accident ng motorcycle, as a whole, basta motorcycle na accident ay kasama yan. Kaya nga ang problema, kaya namin sinusuporta ng... Uh, PWG is, kailangan malaman nila ilan ang angkas dyan eh. Kaya pinaparegister nila. Kasi okay. kahit kami, hirap kami kunin kung angkas ba yan o habal o... Hey, kaya nga eh, so, GM Garcia, pag kinansil ang programa, eh paano, mas lalong hindi natin makikita kung paano nga yung ah, yes, nagiging so. datos ng angkas. Ngayon, huwag magagalit ang gobyerno na kumukuha tayo ng datos sa mga motorcycle taxis kasi hindi ninyo nagagawa yung trabaho nyo eh. I mean, hindi ko sinasabing ah, kayo, no? <laughs> ang sinasabi ko, yung kabuuan. Um, what are you going to say? Okay. Actually, after Senator Recto, I'd like to hear from Attorney Lazada. Senator Recto? I'm sorry, Madam Chair, but uh, um, the question is, today, the OTR is saying, or the technical working group headed by uh, Major General Guardiola is saying that they will stop the pilot testing. Is that correct? Yung mga pagkaintindi ko? Opo, sir. And uh, when, when did you decide on that? Last week, sir, we have a series of meetings and uh, eventually so last uh, week, we last pass week. our recommendation to the Secretary okay. of Transport. So meron kayo minutes ng meeting ninyo? Recorded ba yung, yung uh, meeting ninyo? Uh, we will ask for that minute, sir, for the so, so Department of Transport. Okay, submit naman dito sa Senado. Yeah, we will do, sir. Okay. And what is the reason for terminating the pilot testing? Sinasabi ba ninyo na hindi safe? Is that correct? Tama ba yung pagkaintindi ko dito? No, sir. Hindi. Wala po kaming sinabi sa recommendation namin. Wala pong conclusion yung study namin because okay. yung po ang sinasabi na hindi po, nahirapan po kaming kumuhang datos na kailangan namin ma-evaluate. Ma Dala ng... Yung nga pong sinasabi kong may mga restraining. Kagaya po ng CAP, uh, sir, naglagay po kami ng mag-register sila, ng mga riders nila, but then we will restrain by a court na tinanggal po yung part of our guidelines is the CAP. So ngayon po, hindi na po namin alam kung sino pang mga tatakbo ngayon sa kalsada. Wala na po kami mababasihan ngayon kung yung po ba ay partisana doon sa CAP. So it has government. nothing to do with the safety issue? We will know, sir, because we will get the feedback me mechanism from that, sir. No, no, no. Right now, you are postponing it has nothing to do with the safety issue. You're saying na hindi kayo makagalaw. It's their inability to get the data. The data. Is what they're saying. What instead, yes, of, instead of trying to figure out and offering solution, yes, yes. Uh, how we are able to work together to get the data, you're just unilaterally making a decision to cancel it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, okay. Attorney Lazada. Thank you, po, Madam Chair. I speak as the former board member of LTFRB. I'd like to share that with Grab and Uber, we had a lot of birthing pains. We had a lot of difficulty getting data from Grab and Uber, but we did not give up because we thought of the riding public at the end. I would like to encourage the technical working group to proceed. 
As a matter of fact, we find both Grab and Uber with 5 million for not complying with the orders of LTFRB at the time. We even find Uber with, 100, with 119 million for their violations. So it is not a reason to stop the pilot testing simply because they cannot get the data. We had the patients, we met with them and had several technical working group discussions. We were able to get the data. Po. Just be a little more patient with them than overregulate. Otherwise, kawawa ho ang mga mananakay, kawawa ho yung mga riders. We cannot tell them to put their lives on hold because they have families to feed, they have children to send to school, and what will we tell the riding public? Kasi wala tayong nakukuhang data. I think we need to take the extra mile, we being in government. Thank you, former LTFRB board member Lizada. Actually, we really appreciate your presence here. We know that you have uh, a lot also of other responsibilities, but you've shown uh, impartiality and also expertise when you were in the LTFRB. It's just uh, unfortunate that uh, we have to invite you now uh, from your other department. Uh, Dean Tony Lavinia. Just on the issue of uh, the termination of the, of the pilot study, just first, um, it would be good to remind our government counterparts uh, that the TWG included quite a lot of other stakeholders, uh, not ANCAS, not necessarily with ANCAS, but with uh, road safety, uh, in my case, inclusive mobility. Um, and, and so we're kind of shocked that this, the work that all of us did, devoted our time to, well, just like that, without consultation with us, is, is, is like set aside. Um, and, and had made this about ANCAS, which it's not should be about from the very beginning. Uh, I, people in my colleagues here in the table, WG, would, would remember from the very beginning, I actually um, uh, always aggressively pushed the idea of competition to make sure that we don't have that repeat. Although I, I disagree with the CAP approach, which is the most anti-competitive thing that you can, you can do. Um, but certainly competition was from there from the very, very beginning. So, just from a process point of view, it seems very disrespectful for our government colleagues to just first not to invite us to join the meetings anymore, uh, and to just to dis uh, stop everything without even asking us and our input, uh, and um, doesn't doesn't say very well about you know about the future. If in the future we may, have to do may, that. May I just uh, ask you a quick question? When was the last time uh, you weren't invited? anymore, the stakeholders, the private sector, um, as soon as Yusek Guardiola took over? I, well, October, I think in the Clark one was the last meeting, if I when was this? recall correctly. Uh, well, that was October, no? October, October because 28? there was a closed door hearing prior to their decision December 19, um, putting a cap on the number of motorcycle taxis, but December 19, which will be effective December 23. So this was the height of the holi uh, holiday rush, and then they didn't even give enough time for the participants to comply. Yeah. So parang that alone, I'd like to acknowledge, by the way, the presence of Senator Bongo. Um, it's yeah. Sir, if I, please continue. Uh, and, and that's why it has been very important for us, the stakeholders and the other stakeholders which are independent and which are not attached with any of the groups, uh, to have been invited. Because we would have pointed that, we have, we have, we have pointed that, as I said, I, I've been very aggressive about competition because I think that the, unfortunately the Uber Grab thing ended up in a very bad way from a competition point of view. So from the very beginning, I have, uh, I have pushed that idea from the first meeting about, you know, this is not about ANCAS. Anyone that wants to come in should be allowed to come in, except that they have to meet certain, you know, things like that was, was very clear. But it have been, obviously, if there was any kind of discussion with people who are experts, with people who are, 
who are um, involved in this process in an independent way from a public safety and a public um, mobility point of view, uh, that a cap approach is not the right approach to foster competition. It's the worst thing that you can do. Because you're essentially saying, I will give 10,000 to whoever is there uh, that will that has no record, that has no, and, and then, then the better approach is actually to allow multi-registration. We will always have the multi-registration and allow different actors to come in and based on their certain, you know. Just another thing, uh, so I don't want to occupy too much short of your time on this issue. The other thing is, um, I do have a clear, uh, you know, my classmate, Senator Pimental, would know that, uh, like him, I have a uh, uh, very good memory, especially on important meetings. So it was very clear from the very start that this process, was, this pilot study was supposed to go as far as the time when Congress is then ready to enact the law. So we keep on feeding the results of the study to the legislature because knowing there are complex things here, you would have to fine tune your legislation for that. Because we're also very clear that legislation is very important here. Um, and so in the discussions in the TWG, if my colleagues would recall or if their staff would, 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 would brief them about the initial discussions here, the discussion was when we discussed how long will this study be? The answer actually was when Congress enacts the law. That is how long the study is going to be yeah. because we have to keep on feeding the experience. The premise there is you cannot have um, a situation where you do not allow the riders, the bikers, to do this, and you do not allow passengers, because that's going to be a disaster for the big cities of the country. We know that already. There's no need for a study to make. I mean, I, you know, it took me a while to be converted to to the motorcycle taxis, being an environmental lawyer, etc. Et but you know, because I teach in ten universities, in ten law schools. All my law students tell me the only way they can survive is because they have a cast to, to ride in. So my, that, from that point of view, well, then regulation is the only way forward. And, and we're hoping that absent legislation, you can regulate, because I think there's a legal framework to be able to do that. But that regulation without legislation should continue until legislation comes in. Thank you for clarifying that, Dean Tony. Actually, dito sa nagiging decision nyo, Eh, but masyadong napapressure ang Kongreso na kailangan ng ipasa ang batas na kulang pang pa datos namin. Gusto natin talaga magpasa ng batas pero dapat base sa pag-aaral. At hindi naman kami eksperto dito, kaya kami ay uh, umaasa sa inyo dahil kayong may mandato na gumawa ng pag-aaral na yan. So ikakansela ninyo dahil ayaw ninyong gawin ang trabaho ninyo, ganun ba yon? E paano? Paano ngayon yan? Illegal silang lahat? Tapos pagdating ng Marso, kailangan pasahin na namin tong batas na to? Eh anong klaseng batas ang gagawin namin kung hindi naman kami susuportahan ng tamang pag-aaral? So, uh, I, the, the chair would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator General Bato de la Rosa. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, siguro ngayon, magdinig pa tayo. Ano bang, ano bang pananaw? Halimbawa yung ating um, automatic uh, uh, um, advocate, uh, Mr. Deacon, can you give us your opinion? Should the study be terminated? What, what, what do you think about this? Well, I agree 100%. Thank you, firstly, Madam Chair and uh, the rest of the committee for giving us the opportunity to speak on behalf of the riding public because up until your invitation, I agree with uh, Dean Tony Lavina that we have not been consulted despite being the largest stakeholders in this. And I find it quite ironic that we are the very center of this discussion. It's our welfare, it's our safety, it's our convenience and comfort that's at, at stake here, yet we're not asked about that. And yet when we are asked, in this very familiar room, I was sitting in this very chair, I think two and a half years ago, when we brought up the same thing. We're talking about the same thing, I think now hoping for a different result. I think there's an explanation for that. I agree with the fact that the cap shouldn't be there because I also believe that we are in a bit, we shouldn't even be looking at this anymore as a transport issue. My recommendation would be starting to look at this through the lens of a, a health crisis. Because people are genuinely suffering out there. This is no longer just a situation that can be solved with the machinery that we have with transportation because it is evolving so fast. We've seen in two and a half years, the only thing that came of that was a monopoly. I'm sorry to say, but that's really what happened. And that's not good for the consumer. And now we find ourselves in the exact same situation. The only difference is two wheels versus four. 
and we're trying to implement the same ideas and expect a different result. That doesn't work. It really, we, if we've learned anything from that, is that we should evolve. Times are changing, peoples are changing. The law should change too. It's there to serve the people, not the other way around. We always talk about progress, and I cannot blame also our board members over there, because we are talking about progress, but we're chained to the past with a law that was drafted in 1936, or at least passed in the Public Service Act that is under RA 4136. That could have not possibly predicted the situation that we're in today which is the need for motorcycle taxis. If you're asking my personal opinion on behalf of the riding public who I consult with every day, do I think motorcycle taxis are a good idea? Absolutely not. I think it's an awful idea. I think the mere fact that we're discussing this as a viable alternative speaks more about the failure of an option to provide a safer option. But it's not about what I think. It's not about me. It's about what we need. And right now, we need this. This is why I would like to frame it as a health crisis, because if we frame it as a health crisis, we could look at ANCAS and the new players as some kind of alternative medicine until we get our act together. Because right now it is filling a need, and it is actually alleviating suffering. That is why we really need to look at it with the urgency of a health crisis, because people are genuinely suffering out there. And when you talk to us about safety, we understand there is an issue of safety. But when somebody rides an uncast, I don't think that's absolutely their first choice. No, no offense, George. It's just because if given a choice, we would all probably rather be in the back of a four-wheeled air-conditioned vehicle. But if you ask the same person, would you rather ride the back of a four-wheeled vehicle for three hours versus 45 minutes on the back of an uncast, all of a sudden it changes. We now need to reevaluate our time and set it against safety. And we make that decision. We want to know who misses our family more. We're going to make that decision on based on the time, where we need to be, how much we miss our family. This is why we cannot have other people decide that for us, because we're in a crisis. If you say it's not safe, well, you could also make the same argument about two-minute noodles and sardines. Is that a great diet to have? No. But we're, if we're in a state of calamity, and we just flee an evacuation center, I'll take that, thank you very much. Please don't tell me what I can and cannot put in my body because I'm trying to survive. And that is what people out there are feeling. I'm sorry to have to be so blunt, but if we want to change, it starts here today. We need to start the change with the new bill that I believe that your office is trying to pass, which is trying to turn the Public Service Act around because it needs to be dynamic. It needs to change. We don't need to be here pointing fingers left and right. We should be pointing forward. Because that's where we all win, pointing forward by having a law that keeps up with the times and understands that there is this need. Hopefully in five, ten years' time when there's a subway, we won't need this anymore. That's my dream, is that we don't have to ride motorcycles as taxis, but right now we're kidding ourselves if we think that we could regulate our way out of this mess. We cannot regulate our way out of traffic in the same way we cannot regulate people's suffering. The people are hurting out there, and they have nothing left to lose. And this is why they're desperate. And this is why I'm taking this tone. I'm sorry if it offends anybody, but I'm taking this tone because we are desperate, we're hurting, and we're looking to our legislators now to ease that suffering for us, ease that pain. Please, it all starts with change. We need to do this now. And it starts by listening to us for a change. Because change is the only way out of this mess. Change is going to open a brand new door. And the only question left is, do you believe that the Filipino is worth changing for? Thank you, Mr. Deacon. Um, you have some very correct points. Uh, it's not necessarily the safest, no. but it is something that we need at this time because we don't have, precisely in my opening, we need alternative modes at this juncture when even our MRTs are not fully operational at 100%. Uh, our LRT is not also 100%. And we're still in the face of groundbreaking for our subways. So Madam in the Chair, meantime, may I just add one last thing? Sure. If we think that we can, this is not happening already, the unregulated community, the Habal Habal community, is growing at an exorbitant rate. This is happening. It's happening right now. And if you go to a Habal Habal stand right now, or a depot, you'll find that they're more organized than the people who are trying to actually organize them. Go over there and you'll see some Ancas riders in uniform taking rides. And that speaks volumes about the state of the industry, that they would rather go there because there's obviously more demand being okay, fulfilled say, there and say more it money. Again, 
Uh, they're more organized. Well, the people, yes, the illegal sector are more organized than the people trying to legalize them. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, quote of the day. All right. Um, okay, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Joel Villanueva. Um, I, uh, are there any questions from the from the panel from my fellow senators here? Not yet. Okay. Um, maybe Miss Hamon, and then uh, just a short uh, analysis. Yeah. Pangandang umaga po for this opportunity to speak. Um, I am the convener of uh, Move Metro Manila, and uh, as you know, we are a CSO organization no? that really champions the welfare of commuters. And I agree with you 100%, James, that it's an emergency situation, and therefore, whatever we were able to already accomplish, we move on. We did a pilot of six months for ANCAS. We were a member of the TWG. I think we attended three meetings until we made a decision to allow ANCAS, because of the lack of players that were very well established at that time, to do a pilot of six months. We were expecting the TWG to come up with reports, but we were not convened no? to, for, reports to be sub, to, for reports to be studied and therefore recommendations to be made. So I suggest that if, if, if there are that data, no? Because I think we have, even if so disaggregated, I think we may have other sources of data. Let's study it. And then I think the clamor of the moment is really already to begin crafting uh, changes in the law. Because as you are saying, they are more organized than us and they are, they are able to do their act together faster than us. So in Move Metro Manila, we are for competition. Alam naman natin kapag walang competition, namamahal lahat. And I don't like taking grab because uh, I think it was better when Uber was there and there was competition. But nonetheless, having said that, I think we should already start crafting the legal framework for regulating taxes. May recommend, therefore, that ANCAS and the TWG that was organized, bago po kayo umupo, uh, General uh, Guardiola, sana naman hindi mabaliwala. Tama po si Tony. Hindi naman po ganun kasimpleng nagdesisyon yung grupo doon. Meron lahat ho ng stakeholders, nandun ho kami. Kaya pag ho bigla kayo nagsalita na, na ito ang cap, ito baliwalain natin, nawawala naman ho yata ng, ng, ng silbe ang mga integridad ng mga taong ang political capital eh, hanggang ngayong matatanda kami eh, and nandito tupat at binibigay namin ang aming. Kaya po hindi po yata maganda yung proseso na yun. Kaya po ang suggestion namin ganito, there should be uh, an operations report of ANCAS from June 2019 to December 2019 to include number of reported incidents, no? Accidents, nature, company response protocol, insurance packages, relevant transport data, marami po ito, total number of operators, applicants, documents, lahat po ng kailangang malaman ng ating Senado at ng buong Kongreso so, so that we can move on. And then make that as a basis, George, no? Uh, sinuportahan ka namin noon kasi sabi mo 99%. Totoo po yan. That was a decision made by the, by the credibility that we have given ang CAS. Uh, sabi niyo 99%. Um, Ms. So Amor, please address the chair. So, uh, ma'am, uh, ma'am, sorry po. Uh, so, uh, I w what I'm simply saying is that let's move on and make use of whatever data we have asked them to submit and corroborate the data, we will be, we can help for the Senate to gather that and present a study to you as technical help. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Attorney Lazada. I'd just like to read a portion of the 19 December 2019 revised guidelines for the pilot implementation of motor taxi, motor ta motorcycle taxis, section two, pilot implementation. The pilot implementation will be considered as part of the TWG activities and will be placed under the strict supervision of the DOTR. The final report of the TWG and the result of the public consultation will be submitted to DOTR for approval before submission to the House of Representatives and Senate, which shall serve as valuable inputs for legislative action. If they will terminate now, Ano hong isasubmit sa inyo? Yeah. Yun lang po.
clarify it. Thank you, Attorney Rosada. Um, yung sa Guardiola, narinig po ba ninyo yan? Kasi baka wala pa po kayo nung ito'y napagkasunduan. Eh, siguro kailangan balikan ninyo yung mga bagay na yan para baka magpalit pa yung isip ninyo. Um, Miss uh, Miss LB. Regarding po doon sa ating baseline, ang pinag-uusapan po natin is lack of data. Yun po yung pinag-uusapan ngayon. Wala tayong makuhang data. So, uh, I would like to request that if the TWG is reconvened, number one, they should have to reclassify the data submitted by the PNP. Because sa PNP po, ang data ng most motorcycle crashes, hindi nagka-classify whether it is being used as private or as a public utility. There should be a classification. Reclassify the reports of the PNP, the MMDA, and all other data gathering uh, agencies just like also the DOH. Kasi meron pong pumapasok din sa DOH when they are brought to the hospitals. So all data gathering agencies of government should reclassify the data on motorcycle riding. Then also we would like to request that there should be a continuing operational research. That there should be reports on how these uh, particular types of vehicles are being run. We should know how they are being, the, the drivers are being paid, how the passengers are being charged, and also the movement. How long are the working hours of the riders? Because I know for a fact there are riders who just sleep under the MRT lines. They just park there and they do those off in those places. So we should know the number of working hours of the drivers. We should also know, just like the four-wheel vehicles, the conditions. For example, I see some of the motorcycles that are 120 cc being used as public utility. Does that go? Is it, you know, if we have to classify, I know for a fact that uh, that ANCAS is already classifying their uh, motorcycles based on the weight of the passengers, which some of the passengers did not agree because they said that was somehow uh, discriminatory. However, it is for the safety, of course, we believe that. But there should be a uh, definition, a standardization of the vehicles that will be allowed to run during this pro, uh, experimental period. By the way, Madam Chair, I'd like to inform you that our organization has never been asked to participate. Considering we are the pioneer in commuter safety and protection, we were never invited to any of their... Which is surprising. Weren't you a consultant for the DOTR for a time? Yes, I was assistant secretary for the OTR for a time, but I, I had left the OTR before the TWG started, but since then I was never well, invited. I, I, I suppose you should give them your number again so that they can get in touch with you. Yes, um, uh, Janet Gajola has, has my number question. actually. For the chair of the TWG. So uh, you're announcing the termination of the pilot program. But uh, will the DOTR or will the TWG through the DOTR S submit a report to Congress? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. So, therefore, may laman ng report, di ba? So, uh, kasi ilang ulit na sabi dito, they, you have no data. So, you have data, which you will include in the report. Yung data set ng present data we have mm. in hand was the report submitted by the previous TWG. Now, which is very much lacking of datos. Of so based on the initial uh, six-month yes, pilot uh, implementation, you may yes, Okay, sir. so what? So and then the new TWG extended it to extended it for additional three months, and yes, then sir. it's only one month old, and yet you're saying na kayo to get data 
Opo. Oh, bakit ba hindi ba nagko-cooperate ang participants sa pilot program? I would say so, sir. Uh, we were like also restrained uh, from doing some of the guidelines that we outlined in our... Restrained by? Uh, I have member, can I have a member, member of... Hindi, kasi of, ganito yun eh. Uh, rest, kung restrained by the court, hindi kasalanan ng participants. But if participants are not cooperating, ah, ibang usapan yun. Di ba? Oh. Ah, sige, please clarify. Sir, can I... Good morning, Madam Chair, uh, Honorable Senators. Yung sa konteksto po ng uh, additional, nung, uh, uh, extended implementation po ng pilot run is to gather information from other sources po, other than ang CAS. So that was the objective po. Kung kaya namili po tayo ng dalawang additional players, proponents, para po makakuha tayo ng sapat na, na datos upang magkaroon po ng maganda. Ito muna. So, kumuha kayo ng dalawang participants para magkaroon kayo ng tamang datos. Ganun ba? Pero again, you're relying on the private sector to give you the data. Paano sila magiging, if, if you accuse ang kaso of being uh, uncooperative or maybe biased, why are you going to rely again on the new players? Shouldn't you get that data from government itself? from the reports of the accident? Madam Chair, maraming salamat po. Yung mga datos po kasi na ating, sa ating mga ibang ahensya ng gobyerno, wala po kasing particular distinction kung ito po ay motorcycle taxis. These are date, yung data po nila is motorcycles in general. You know kung what kaya, you could have done? What you could have done, and I'm not even an expert, but I would say this, is to get together with those agencies that file or that that um that gets the accident reports and tell them to classify it yun lang naman dapat yung ginawa mo if that's the reason why you need to extend this program then you should kausapin niyo yung PNP kausapin yung HPG yung MMDA from now on when you when you when you file accident reports it has to be it has to include is this a motorcycle taxi eh sino sabi nila hindi daw ganoon eh madam chair in, in the first place, dapat miembro sila ng technical working group siguro, di ba? Is the PNP a member of the technical working group? Dapat yung highway patrol, katsanggalin yun. Ang PNP ba, member ng technical working group? Resource person po. Resource person? Yes, sir. So, nagpapatawag ba kayo ng mga meeting at hearing kasama sila? Uh, sir, for the, yung sa, nung panahon po ni BM Guardiola, sir, Ang una po namin ginawas. No, no, no. Prior to that, remember, ah, nag-umpisa tayo six months ago. Six months tayo nag-umpisa. May programa, pilot project, ang DOTR. Ah, tungkol sa motorcycle taxi. Na dapat sa parangay, sasabihin na ninyo sa amin yung inyong findings. Di ba? Ah? So, bakit papalit-palit yung technical working group nyo? Nung una, may kinatawan pa ang kongreso sa observer. Ang MMDA, miyembro. Tama. Bakit pinalita nyo? Natanggal ba yung MMDA? They are still resource persons. They are still resource yes, persons. So, ngayon, hindi kayo handa magpaliwanag sa kongreso kung ano yung findings ng technical working group ninyo. Me. And that is why you wanted an extension. Walang problema doon. Pero ngayon, may hearing tayo, may dokumento ngayon kayo na nagsasabi, ititigil na namin ito. At pag binasok yung dokumento, parang napakatindi ng galit ninyo. Ha? At kung pakikinggan niyo yung mga resource persons dito, halos lahat kanina pa nagsasabi, dapat ituloy ito for the commuting public. Wala kami yung problema sa competition. Teka, pinayagan ito ni Secretary Tugade? Yeah, Mr. Chair, it, terminate. It was, it was uh, favorably, favorably uh, forwarded to, submitted to Congress, sir. Ma Madam, Madam Chair, ano? mag-interject lang ako, papayagan okay. ninyo ako dahil medyo nalilito ako sa proseso. 
Um, Unang-una, yung first set of guidelines na lumabas nung June, ang pumirma si Secretary Tugade, ang letterhead DOTR. Pakatapos nun, puro LTFRB na ang uh, nagsasabi. At yung, uh, yung letterhead po ninyo sa second guidelines, sa inyo na lamang wala ng Tugade. Tapos, itong latest ng 17th, iba-iba na naman to. Meron DOTR, may LTFRB, merong LTO, may IAC. Para nakakalito, sino ba talaga ang naging issue nitong mga report na to at bakit sa uh, paiba-iba? Correct. DOTR dapat lang sa langit. Secretary Tugade hindi na pumirma nung second at nung third. Bakit po? There was a special order on that effect, ma'am. And that is why it is not only LTFRB. Nangyari lang po kasi eh, I work for the institution of LTRP, but I was designated as chairman. But its members are members of the DOTR family, ma'am. Naintindihan ko, pero matagal na namin hinihingi yung special order na yon, Kasi nakakalito, pakatapos itong third order na naman, iba na naman yung letterhead. Bakit ganon? May naguhugas kamay ba? Wala po, ma'am. Na, Napublish po namin yung special report, ma'am. And automatic po uh, ini-email namin sa addresses ng participants. Opo. Hanggang ngayon, wala po kaming kopya ng special order. At higit sa lahat, wala rin kayong report para sa PWG. Maliwanag ho ba yun na wala kayong report na magawa matapos ang lampas ng anim na buwan na pilot study? Dahil walang datos, dahil may isyu sa safety, pa iba iba po ang sinasabi ninyong dahilan. Pero ang maliwanag, walang report. Tama po ba? Uh, meron po ma'am. Nakapalo po dito sa sinumiti namin report sa Kongreso, uh, tab D, yung report po ng TWG na dati po. Ta tab D po ma'am, nasa D. Wala pong uh, maayos na report dito eh. Yeah. Parang relipit lang ninyo yung findings ng President TWGs over and over again. That is the reason, ma'am, why nag-set po tayong guidelines. Because if we will look after the report submitted by the previous TWG, wala po talagang konkretong datos na makikita doon. Dahil nung unang pag-aaral po, iisa po ang nag nagsusumiti ng report. Wala pong... Uh, Wala po yung monitoring device, kaya po tayo naggumawa ng guidelines para malaman natin. So sa madaling sabi po, general po kayo, sumuko na po kayo. Hindi na natin kaya mag-produce ng datos, ng analysis, ng evaluation. Surrender na po. Ah, hindi naman po ito usapan na. Hindi naman po kami sumusuko, madam. Ah, kami po, ang ibig Kasi sabi, eh, sabi dito, ah, sulat ni Chorto eh. This study will not be able to produce any comprehensive data for analysis and evaluation. Hindi po ba surrender to? Hindi po. Kaya, Then, dapat nakapa... iba na ang pumasok na mag-aral nito sapagat hindi na kaya ng TWG at ng LTFRB. Ganun po ba? Sa pagre-respeto po namin sa korte, dahil po kami in-restrain, gawin ang dapat namin gawin. At dahil na-restrain kayo, sinundan ninyo, may recommendation sa walang closure report, subalit may recommendation na kayo na magba-blacklist ng kaisa-isang nag-ooperate. Hindi lang po, kung babasahin po maigi yung sa guidelines, ang blacklisting po hindi po ay nakapalob actually doon sa tatlong partisipante, kundi yung ibang motorcycle riding hailing Uh, companies na nagpapatupad pa po kasi kung mapapansin po natin na mili po Sorry, tayo. sorry, sir. Dito po sa page 6 ata itong kopya ko kasi katatanggap ko lamang po. Yung recommendation number 19, blacklisting of ANCAS and its incorporators. Ibig sabihin, hindi individual riders yan, kundi buong-buo yung kumpanya. Tama po ba? Tama po. Dahil sa pag-violate eh, po ng mga ninyo, guidelines. Yung iba lang, lalo malabag. Kung yung pong sa guidelines ang titingnan natin, ang nakalagay po sa blacklisting para mabantayan natin kasi napakadami na pong kumpanyang hindi kasama doon sa nag-aaral ang naghihail ng ano, naghihail ng passenger na delikadong delikado nga po. Ya kami po ay mag employ po kami ng mga mystery passenger para alamin yung hindi kasama sa pag-aaral ay naghihail ng passenger. Yung po ang dapat na i-blacklist plus yung nagba-violate po ng guidelines natin. Ngayon po, 
Sir, uh, iba naman yung sinasabi ninyo dito sa report na sinab ni Pino. Opo, totoo Bumbo po. ang blacklist dito ng ANGKAS. Opo, ma'am. Eh, iisa lang naman yan nag-ooperate. Sino pa kaya ang tinutukoy ninyo? Opo, ma'am. Kasi ganit po yan. Nakalagay po sa guidelines kasi kahit sa unang TWD pa po. Ang Hindi ilang... na po guidelines to eh. Blacklisting na po to, termination order. Yes, ma'am. Pag-implement po ng guidelines. guideline guideline dito. O kasi po, yung sa una po... Sinentensyahan na. Yung sa una pong guideline, yung unang guideline po ng unang TWG, ang area of study po gagang, gagang dapat gawin sa NCR lang po at Cebu. Yung po ay pinatuloy karamihan po dito sa guideline na ginawa oh, po namin. Pagpalapas naman, lang. Nabasa naman po namin yan sa dyaryo. Ang tinatanong ko, bakit buong buo nagbablacklist kayo? Eh, kasasabi mo lang individual errant bikers. Parang ganun ang pagkaintindi ko. Opo. Kasi po, sa, in any case, wala po kayong report, pero kaya ninyo mag-blacklist. Kasi po, may mga nangyari na, may mga kaganapan na po. Paano nyo nalalaman na may violation? Kung wala nga kayong guidelines at hindi nga maliwanag yung datos. Ano po ma'am sa guidelines? Nabawal mag-operate sa ibang lugar. Kaya lang nag-operate sila sa Cagayan de Oro, sa General Santos, sa ngayon sa Pampanga. Okay, kaya yung po. pang blacklist natin. Kasi sa ngayon po, sa pag-aaral pa lang po, ayaw nang sumunod sa guidelines. Paano po kung may batas na? Alam po Alam, natin po yung mga yan. violation. Alam po natin. Pero, Madam Chair at uh, mga Vice Chair, malapit na rin akong sumuko. Maraming salamat po. Mr. Chair, just, uh, just one... Senator one, Joel Vigil, we have just, just one, I know I have to wait for my turn to, to ask questions, but but uh, I, I'm not going to uh, start asking questions because uh, I know it's, it's, it's not my time. But I just wanted to remind uh, our, our resource person here because I've been listening attentively to our uh, resource persons, and we've been hearing uh, paulit-ulit po, hindi sila naimbita, hindi sila narinig, etc. Kay, kay, kay Mr. Gerjola, in, in Section 6 of the uh, amended guidelines, it is very clear, yung monitoring and uh, evaluation, that you have the responsibility to conduct feedback, survey, gather government data and private data. I'm just wondering, uh, why do we keep on hearing na hindi kami naimbita, hindi kami, paano kami makapagbigay ng data kung hindi kami naimbita? So, uh, I wanted to make sure that, uh, sir, you are not uh, reneging on your uh, responsibility, which you created yourself, uh, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, before Senator Pimentel, would you like to respond to that? And then Sen Senator Pimentel uh, recognized. Ah, yes, sir. The data that we are supposed to gather, of course, from other resource persons po, makukuha po kami ng datos dyan. But then, the most important data that we want to gather are from the passengers themselves. From the passengers themselves. That's why, in our guidelines, sir, you will see that we, have, we will be employing mystery passengers. Ang mangyayari po niyan, Sasakay po sila, titingnan kung safe talaga, kung ginagawa talaga yung safety gears na nilagay natin sa guidelines, and they will make report to us. Yung po ang pinaka-effective na uh, feedback mechanism natin. Kasi sila po mismo ang nakasakay doon sa pinag-aaralan natin, motorsiklo, kung safe po talaga. Titingnan po kung disiplinado talaga ang rider. Kasi actual po silang nakasakay. Unlike other resource persons po, nakikita lang po nila, unless kung sumakay po sila doon sa pinag-aaralan natin. So fortunately, Mr. Chair, unfortunately, simple data, like you don't even know kung ito ay uh, taxi na motorsiklo o hindi. Hindi natin na-record uh, during the time because you made mention a while ago, si uh, Senate President Pro Tempore even asked if you invited uh, the PNP. They were invited as resource persons. It's so easy to check whether or not itong aksidente na nangyari ay... Uh, uh, galing sa motorcycle taxi, uh, Mr. Mr. Ch Mr. Chair. Y yes, sir. Uh, can I answer to that, sir? Please proceed. Yes, sir. Uh, kaya po, sir, tayo may nilagay na parameters doon sa ano natin na uh, mag employ tayo ng mystery passengers. And another thing, we already coordinated with MMDA because the first report, hindi po tayo maka-generate if it is a F motorcycle taxi who who have a uh, gun violation. Kaya ngayon po, hindi na generic. Okay, I'm not saying just motor motorcycle taxi. No? For example, ilang passenger po yung ginamit ninyo? Ano yung duration? Ano yung metrics? Uh, excuse me, sir. May ilang passenger po it? yung uh, ginamit ninyo? As, as you were saying kanina, ilang hindi passenger na. po? Ano yung duration nung, nung, nung inyong pag-aaral? 
as as you mentioned na you're doing your responsibility dito sa as as, as per section 6 actually po sir mag-uumpisa pa lang kami sa mag-employ ng ano mag-employ ng uh, mystery Ay, passengers yeah. ng 12 so, so, sir so, 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 actually nung 12 pa sir this January 12 but we already have the guidelines sir we have already have the guidelines we were about to employ pag nakumpleto na yung cap na inaantay natin and if pag nag-register na po yeah. sila yeah, before I, I, I give the floor to Senator Pimentel precisely the point yun ang pinagtatalunan din dito yung arbitrariness ninyo sa pagsabi ng mga cup-cup na yan. Di ba? Uh, uh, lumalabas din ang kulang ang public consultation din ninyo. Kaya kayo natitiro ng korte. Yun ang dahilan. Tapos dahil natitiro ko o kayo, galit naman nung pinapakita ninyo, and you're recommending, maliwanag sa dokumento nito eh. Puro galit din eh. Dahil nag-rally laban sa inyo, galit na kagad kayo. Eh kulang kayo sa public consultation eh. Yan ang problema ninyo. So at this juncture, let me recognize... Let, let me just point out last, lastly, no? Kakasabi, kakasabi, nakakasimula lang nila. Pero kanina rin, ititigil na nila. Hindi ko, hindi ko maintindihan to, Madam Chair. So, Alam mo, ang lumalabas dito. Let me just dito. put that on record. Ang lumalabas dito, petics ang ginagawa ninyo eh. Bahala na lang. Kung ano yung nararamdaman nyo sa araw na yun, hindi na ninyo kinonsidera yung talagang importante uh, bagay dito na wala nga tayong alternatibo sa ngayon. Ngayon siguro, um, sa angkas at saka sa ibang mga joyride at sa iba pa, eh siguro wag na muna tayo mag-file ng mga kaso uh, habang may pag-aaral. Isa din yan sa bagay para makikita nga natin kasi kung puro TRO, hindi nga uusad. So yan yung magandang balanse. Siguro, kaya umiinit ang ulo nito, ginagantihan kayo dahil doon, doon sa mga kaso. Kayo naman, syempre, magpa-file kayo ng kaso because of the uncertainty of the program. Meron na ngang mga pinagkasunduan, tapos changing the goalposts in the middle of the game. Hindi naman pwedeng ganon. Di ba? Dapat malinaw kayo from the onset, ano bang parameters. Hindi yung, ah, palitan natin dito, ganyan. Um, Senator Bongo has a... Uh, okay. Yes, I'll just continue Sorry. with my uh, second question. No, you, yung, you mentioned TRO. You know, I will not ask the court which issued the TRO, but sino ba nag-TRO sa inyo? Sino nag-TRO sa inyo? Uh, Your Honor, uh, I have a question. At anong part ng programa ang affected by the TRO? Sige, ang nagabla po sa amin, uh, Your Honor, is DBDOYC Company, mm -hmm. the official name of ANCAS, and ANCAS Riders po. There are two cases pending in uh, Mandaluyong and Quezon City. What, which parts of the program ang subject of the TRO? Section 10 po, Your Honor, which uh, refers to the uh, setting of cap, cap and the additional proponents to join the uh, pilot program. Ah, so yun. So... It, uh, it, it's, uh, it affects the essence of the extended pilot uh, program kung ganun. Kasi question na yung, lalo na yung pangalawa. Because yes. you extended it with uh, additional participants. Yes, okay, right. so, meron, sa, sa, sa guidelines ninyo, key performance indicators, accident threshold, 5% of total rides. Di ba? So, total rides. Ibig sabihin nun, total rides na uh, isin isinagawa nung ride hailing app, di ba? Company. So, so this should be, hindi ba to submitted periodically to the technical working group? Yan po question ko. Did the participants, did the current participants or did the, pre did, did the previous uh, sole participant comply and uh, submit a report on the accidents, if any, Per ride or per total ride? Meron po? Uh, based on the documents submitted by the previous DWG, uh, the previous participants submitted the report in terms yung on accidents, mm. on the ridership, mm. and even on the safety aspect. Mm. But the previous DWG, in their recommendation, in their report, recommended further evaluation, further study. Hence the 
extension of the program, sir. Oh, so and and dito pala to. So what anong 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 insight na kuha natin dun sa 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 first six months? How was the accident uh, threshold? What Wala po, it? sir. Huh? Wala po kaming we cannot conclude on that because it was as a, it was their report. There was na there was no data from the technical working group. Oh, nga, to double check the data yes, submitted sir. by them. Opo, opo. Pero inyo yun eh, di ba? It's Basta ganito, ganito, para klaro ah, did the participant comply by submitting reports? Nag yes or no? Nag They submitted reports. So sir. it's your obligation now to see kung... To, come, to validate, sir. Kung dinoktor, dinoktor ba yun, or uh, manufactured ba yun, or accurate yun. So dapat i-double check ninyo. Yes, okay. sir. But per submitted reports, on the basis of the submitted reports, kumusta ang accident threshold? Uh, based, based on the report, they reported a 99% safety. So 99%. So 1% according to them. Ano, sabi rito po, both major and minor incidents ang kailangan ni-report. So, yes, sir. So yes, 99% sir. Yes, sir. no need to report. Ganun ba yung lumalabas? So 1% lang yung... Yes, sir. Okay, what is the meaning of safety? No accident, di ba? Yes, sir. Yun ang meaning of accident. So 99%. So in, in effect, the submitted report to you is that 99% of total rides walang incidente. Yes, sir. Tama, Based on the report. Yes. Nasana di no We should have by no. oh, to validate to validate yeah. the report, yeah. sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. So okay. So <laughs> so thank you, Madam Chair. Thank parang alam mo kung don lang sa datos na binigay ng MMDA, eh parang tama rin naman kasi out of 1.2 million motorcycle riders. Uh, parang 73 a day, uh, tapos 20 plus thousand a year, is really 2.2%. So, it's within the margin of error, if you call it. At uh, pwedeng gawin, kunyari tinatamad kayo, napunin yung datos, pwede naman kayo pumunta sa ibang PNP stations or HPG or a sector within the MMDA and then get The accident reports there, and from there, parang survey sample size na yan eh. Di ba, di ba Chair um, Garjola, dating highway patrol naman kayo eh. Pwede naman i-access lahat ng data na yan. Hindi naman ganun kakomplikado. At uh, kung ina-allege na nagmamayabang yung angkas dun sa 99% na safe, sa palagay ko hindi nga nagkakalayo sa binigay ni Jojo mula sa Metro Manila, sapagkat... Uh, Yung sa angkas naman, trained naman talaga sila. Pakatapos yung uh, roadworthiness, lahat yung insurance, nag -e effort naman sila mag-comply sa guidelines ninyo. Kaya siguro mas mababa talaga sila. Maintindihan naman yun eh. Dean Tony and then uh, Mr. Inton. Di, di, dito nga sana maganda kung uh, pinatuloy nilang uh, imbitahin kami yung mga advocates, lalo na yung mga ad, uh, safety advocates, uh, at yung mobility advocates kasi we could have give suggestions on how to validate the ano the data of angkas kasi kaya hindi naman namin tatanggapin yung angkas so self self ano naman yun di ba self reporting yun eh that's a report madali naman yun i ano madali naman yun i i validate including including even field work that can be done ano and just another point lang ma'am i think uh, Mr. Madam Chairman yung I think let's go back to yung real reason dun sa pag-terminate, diba? which is the the legal case, diba? Kung ganun lang, kasi again, if they came to us and asked, consulted us about the cap and the entries, for sure, we could have given a lot of support, yung mga independent, ano, to the entry, because we want new entries, we want new companies, but we will not, many of us will not support a cap. Uh, kasi it's really anti-competitive, it favors Groups, unfortunately nga, binibigyan ng mga kahulugan. I don't think na may kahulugan lahat yun. I think it's a competitive thing. Um, ano, but a cap does that. A cap is wrong because it does that. And they, maybe if they could hear, hear our arguments, including like in my case, I have capacity to give comparative uh, uh, data from all over the world about this. Talagang caps are anti-competitive. And it's actually not good for, mas mabuti pa yung, registration is very good. That we support completely, di ba? So the case could be been avoided. That's the way to avoid the case. You can just actually have, uh, you know, I mean, if the case of uh, of Ancas includes prevention of entry of, and I would oppose that personally also because that's not right, right? But I would oppose the cap. 
uh, because that, that's also wrong. And therefore, pwede sana nag-compromise doon kung may proseso. Di ba? Napag-usapan sana natin, nakampuganda ng idea. Otherwise, we're back to to zero again, di ba? Um, which my view, Madam Chairman, everyone knows this in the TWG when we're discussing the legality of this. My view, actually it's wrong to say na illegal, and I think LTFRB will be committing illegal acts if they actually arrest people after that. But it actually means that you will have a major economic activity without regulation, without safety, without economic regulation. That's what it will mean uh, if, in fact, uh, on Monday, that's what they're going to do. Um, I'm sure the damning cases for file against if they arrest people and they arrest an audipan, that would not be acceptable to, to the public. The very fact that we allow that pilot study tells you actually it can be done legally without a new law. But I don't want that because we're on regulation, right? Diba? That's not good for safety uh, without regulation. It's, it's a very major economic activity and lots of money that is involved here, livelihoods involved. Kailangan may, may regulation uh, eventually by Congress, but temporary by, by, by the DOTR because they do have the power and the for me has a power to do that. I mean, they had the power to do that with Uber and Grab. This debate happened during the same time. It's the same issue. Diba? About, about the, the limits of the law. I think maybe later on we will ask the opinion of the Philippine Competition Commission. Um, Attorney Inton, just, uh, I, I already uh, made a commitment to Senator Gott to give his opening statement prior to, to you. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair. I am and will always be a strong supporter of private companies and their crucial role in making the Philippines a more progressive and prosperous nation. They are important partners of government in providing quality and safe goods and services to our citizens. However, before I proceed any further, allow me first to state my position when it comes to choosing between public and private interests. It is a given to me, both as a senator and as a Filipino, to prioritize the interests of the Filipino people. Recently, the transport networks Vehicle Service or TNBS company, Grab and Motorcycle Riding Up Angkas have been in the headlines and experiencing public scrutiny due to various concerns regarding their services. While these companies have uh, truly been a great help to commuters by providing alternatives for commuting public, we cannot overlook the issues that have surrounded their operations in recent months. But before identifying these issues, it is proper that we first acknowledge the many benefits that ANCAS provides the, to the commuting public. The service helps ease the worsening traffic situation in Metro Manila and other key cities in the country by providing an alternate option to existing public transportation. It provides cheaper and faster services compared to many offered by four-wheeled vehicles in the sector. It also helps thousands of previously unregulated habal habal drivers in our country by enabling them to become part of the formal economy. We also acknowledge the high safety standards being observed by ANCAS, which include accepting drivers with no less than two years of driving experience, their units must be not <clears throat> older than seven years old. Training with written and practical exams needed to be passed and helmets and reflectors being provided to drivers and passengers alike. Nonetheless, we are a nation governed by laws, laws which are primarily geared towards protecting the rights and welfare of the commuting public. Under the existing laws, motorcycles are not allowed to be used for public transport an amendment to Republic Act 4136 is therefore needed to allow motorcycles to be used as public transport. Considering its pioneering status, ANCAS was stopped as a participant in the pilot implementation, which began in June 2019. As the program is relatively new concept in transportation services, it, only, it can only rely on the fluidity of the pilot implementation to develop the guidelines. Thus, the TWG has been developing guidelines which are meant to safeguard public interest. Consequently, the TWG, TWG or Technical Working Group 
has also opened up the program to include other participants. To be able to establish a benchmark analysis and provide Congress with valuable inputs to develop a regulatory framework in coming up with necessary recommendations as well as amendments to Republic Act 4136. And while we are on the issue of opening up the industry to new participants, I may as well respond to some malicious allegations that I purportedly own and have vested interest in one of the players being included in the pilot program. Gusto ko sabihin sa lahat na nakikinig ngayon sa public hearing na ito, hindi po totoo yung kumakalat sa Twitter at ibang social media outlets na ako raw ay may ari o may interest ako sa joyride. Nagsalita na po si Mr. Noli Ayala, uh, isang malaking kasinungalingan po ito, fake news po ito. Sa LTFRB naman po, sa lahat, magkakilala naman tayo, kilala niyo po ako. General Garjola, uh, Tony De, uh, Delgra, kayong lahat. Pag ginamit po ang pangalan ko at ginamit yung pangalan ni Pangulo at ginamit kahit mga kaanak ni Pangulo, Please deny the application immediately. Automatic na po yun. Wala nang dapat pag-usapan. Matagal nang sinasabi ni Pangulo yun. Huwag kayong magpapadala. Ngayon, sa totoo lang, nung lumabas lang ang isyong ito, narinig ko ang kumpanyang Joyride na yan. Baka sa susunod, alam nyo ba, hal halos lahat po ng kanto, kayo, mga riders, motor motorcycle riders, di ba halos lahat ng kanto merong traffic light? Baka sabihin niya na naman, yung green na yan, akin din yan. Hindi akin yung go na yan. Baka, <laughs> kikita niyo, puro green yan mamaya. Okay, bongo na naman yan. Eh, pati yung, halos lahat yung mga motorcycle riders. Di ba minsan, nakikita niyo may mga hotel dyan. Yung Sogo. Hindi, baka sabihin niyo, akin yan. O kayo lang yung suki dyan, ha. Pati yung chokes to go. Baka si, ano yan, si... Mr. Go, Edwin Go, di ba sa'yo yan? Makay ko, yun naman ni Obra mo ha. Sa lahat ng mga kasamahan ko sa gobyerno, gusto ko ipaalala ulit sa inyo, huwag maniwala sa mga gumagamit ng pangalan namin ni Pangulo o sa mga kaanak niya, hindi nakakatulong kung sino man ang gumamit sa aming mga pangalan. Asahan din ninyo na sa lahat ng gumagamit ng pangalan namin, denied lahat yan, kagaya ng sinabi ng Pangulo, hindi kami sumasali sa anumang government contracts o walang dumadaan sa aming lamesa na ganyan, ang hangarin namin ay interes ng publiko at makapagserbisyo sa bawat Pilipino. Sa promotor ng nagkakalat ng fake news, hindi, hindi ko kayo palalampasin and uh, I will make you busy. Uh, wag mong gawin sa iyong kapwa kung anong ayaw mong uh, gawin sa iyo. At sa mga drivers naman po, Uh, nagmamalasakit kami sa inyo nakikiusap po ako sa inyo um, ingat po kayo sa pagmamaneho huwag kayong uminom pag naka, nagmamaneho lalong lalo na po sa motor baka pag nabunggo kayo ako na naman may kasalanan And anyway may mga malasakit center naman handang tumulong sa inyo huwag naman sana anyway kung ako lang po masusunod ito pakinggan nyo po ah kung ako lang po masusunod, lahat ng industry players ay bibigyan natin ng prangkisa para mabigyan natin ng hanap buhay ang lahat basta siguradong ligtas ang siguridad ng bawat pasero. Kapag maayos ang inyong serbisyo, sasama pa ako sa pamamasada po ninyo lahat. Meron nga isang senador na gumawa ng endorsement letter para sa joyride pero hindi naman niya ginawa yon para mag-influence at mabuti ang kanyang intensyon He only wants to keep the playing ground fair and balanced. Ganon din po ang gusto ng DOTR, ang maging pantay-pantay ang lahat ng service providers. As for Grab, the Philippine Competition Commission has recently penalized the company with 16.15 million fine for overpricing and high driver cancellations in violation of service quality commitments. According to reports, the fine is composed of 14.15 million for pricing deviations and 2 million for driver cancellations of 7.76 of rides instead of the 5% ceiling. The 16.15 million in total fine is just the latest in a series of penalties imposed on Grab for violations. 
for violating its pricing commitments to PCC, Grab was fined 11.3 million in the first quarter, 7.1 million in the second quarter, 5.05 million in the third quarter. Given this string of violations, we want to find out whether or not the transport network company have abused the privileges that it has been given during the last holiday season. I will not hesitate to push for cancellation of your permit if you violate your mandates as stated in your respective contracts. Fair structure guidelines must also be strictly followed and those found continually abusing these commitments must be punished with stiff penalties such as fines and suspension if warranted. Ultimately, we also want to find out whether or not the opening of the program to other participants would be beneficial to the commuting public. After all, the primordial consideration of our law should always be the interest of the Filipino people. There is no doubt that the business of the public transportation is imbued with public interest. It is the reason we are here right now, and it's also the reason why we are adamant that only those qualified only under existing laws and capable of ensuring the safety of the public are allowed to operate. Hangat ko po ang pagdinig na to sa Senadong ito ay mabigyan ng linaw ang mga isyong patungkol sa Grab at ang CAS. Gaya ng lagi kong sinasabi, hindi po kami anti-businesses, hindi niyo po kalaban sa gobyerno. Ngunit bilang service providers, may mga responsibilidad din tayo na dapat gampanan sa mga Pilipino consumers. Trabaho namin ang proteksyonan ang kanilang interes at seguridad. Mahalaga po ang public interest at safety ang parating manguna. Mahalaga man ang hindi mawalan, mahalaga man, hindi mawalan ng hanap buhay ang, ang mga empleyado at importante man proteksyonan din ang natin ang karapatan ng karamihan ng magnegosyo. Hindi po natin dapat isa walang bahala ang mga batas at interes ng bawat Pilipino. Hindi kailanman dapat isakripisyo ang kapakanan ng publiko at bawat pasahero. Nararap, nararapat lang po isa puso at isip din natin ang kanilang kapakanan. Hindi lamang po kung magkano ang kikitain natin sa kanila. Ika nga, mas masarap sa pakiramdam ang manigosyo at kumita kung alam mo malinis ang iyong konsensya at wala kang sinasaktan at nagrabyado. Huwag na natin hintayin na mara meron pang di ka nais-nais na mangyari sa mga driver at pasahero bago tayo mag-imbestiga sa Senado. Pag-usapan na natin ngayon ang safety ng mga pasahero. Yun lang ang importante sa akin at kay Pangulong Duterte. Ngayong umaga po ay nabalitaan ko na may rekomendasyon ang technical working group na itigil ang pilot program ng motorcycle taxis. I will support the continuation of the program and the amendments to the Republic of 4136 to include motorcycles as an alternative for public transport because I recognize the benefits they provide to the commuting public. Ang gusto ko lamang ay gawin lang ng maayos at most importantly, maproteksyonan po ang interest ng commuting public. Madam Chair, I will recommend to the President and to Secretary Artogade the extension of the pilot program for the motorcycle taxis provided that they will abide and care for the safety of the passengers. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator God. That's quite reassuring. I think that uh, that is our, the direction of this committee as well, is to recommend the extension of the pilot program because we cannot make effective and meaningful laws if we don't have the proper data. And we can only have that data if we continue with this pilot program. And what's just a little bit confusing to me at this point is that if this was truly approved by Secretary Tugade, uh, why is he not even a signatory in this uh, circular? Um, and maybe he should come to the next hearing to be able to clarify his stand on this study. Um, before I turn the floor over to Senator Win Gachalian. Maybe a short uh, remark from Attorney Inton. Just a oh, short remark, please. Apo. Uh, uh, magandang umaga po, Chair Ronan. Uh, sa tingin ko po, ang uh, consensus ay ituloy yung pilot program. Kung may recommendation man po yun na uh, present TWG na 
uh, nais na nilang uh, itigil, marahil kailangan magbuo ng bago. No? Para sila ngayon, eh, yung kapakanan po ng mga pasayero ay, uh, ay kang uh, maalagaan. One point po dun sa ano, why is it that the cup is so controversial? Yung pong uh, cup kasi po, uh, siguro isa pong magandang halimbawa yung sa TNVS, TNC. Before there was Grab and Uber, there was no cup, there was no industry cup. But uh, during our time when I was still with LTFRB, malaya po pumili yung provider whether you go with Grab or Uber, or even both. Pwede ka rin sumama sa pareho. Ngayon, when Uber, uh, uh, o hinawala po yung Uber, at uh, nagkaroon po ng issue ng monopoly ang Grab, nagpasok po ng mga bagong player. And yet, yung nagkaroon po ng CAP, hindi ginawa ng LTFRB na i-divide yung CAP among Grab and the other new players. It never happened that way. Ganun pa rin, may kalayaan pa rin pumili yung provider kung saan kasasali, anong app. Yun po ang aming rekomendasyon dito sa motorcycle taxi. Kapag ka nagkaroon po ng extension, hayaan pumili yung provider. No? Mer kung maglalagay ka man ng cap, let the providers uh, choose whether they go for angkas, joyride, or move it, or... Uh, in, in a way, kung sino pa yung bago. No? Or, they can join uh, ano, dun sa lahat. Kasi, ang nangyari po kasi dun, na may 27,000 na po yung angkas, natural, kapag naglagay ka ng 10,000 cap, walang pupuntaan. And then, you will, you will tell them na, oh, dilipat kayo dun sa iba. E di parang sinabi mo sa isang basketball team na, eto na laban sa'yo, wala siyang player, o sige, di, bigay natin yung mga player mo dito para lumaban sa'yo. So, ang, ang rekomendasyon po namin, kung itutuloy po yan, no, at talagang nandiyan yung new players, give the uh, option to the providers. The competition is not only sa, supply, uh, sa passenger side, but also dun sa providers. Para sa ganun, may pagpipilian po kung saan nila gusto sumaling up. Yan so, madam, po, uh, madam Chairman. Madam Chair, since there appears to be a broad-based consensus on actually extending the use of uh, ride-hailing uh, bikes, um, gusto ko lang itanong, dahil may conclusion din dito sa pag-terminate, na may sampu daw na nag-apply at dalawa lang ang pinagbigyan. Pwede bang itanong sa grab bike? Nag-apply po ba kayo? Sa pakiwari ko, ang talagang may experience dyan at alam natin may track record, eh yung Grab at pati na rin yung bago sanang papasok. Pero natakot yata, may representative bago Jack dito. Okay, uh, maikli lang na tanong kasi actually, Opo. Senator Marcos, yeah. it's a turn of uh, Senator Winda Chalia. Kasi yes. pinag-uusapan na yung competition. Ano yung basehan ng pagpili ng dalawa samantalang may dambuhalong mga kumpanya na pagkahaba-haba na ng kanilang uh, karanasan dyan? yung grab bike at saka sana yung gojek. Hindi po ba? Kasi sila yung sikat eh sa larangan niyan. So, Leo Gonzalez yata, sabi ni Chair. Yes, uh, Madam Chairman, thank you po. Opo, we signified our in letter, we submitted the letter of intent po sa LTFRB. Uh, uh, we are ready to present at any given time po. Bakit, bakit hindi kayo napili? Alam po ba ninyo, may binigyan ba? May, may binigay ba dahilan? Um, actually po, nahuli po kami sa pag-apply uh, at the time. We did not meet the deadline. Uh, but shortly thereafter, uh, nag-submit po kami ng intention. So, um, whatever happens po dito sa decision po dito, if the, if the pilot continues or is reset, uh, we will comply. Okay, Madam Chair, siguro hihingi na lang natin kay Chairman Garjola. Ano yung basehan? Kailan, kailan nag-submit? Ano yung basis ninyo sa pagpili? Dahil uh, yung napili, parang wala pa naman track record. Bagong-bago pa lamang. Samantalang yung mga matagal na sa uh, business na ito, yung Grab at saka yung Gojek, hindi hinayaan. Yun lang po. It, uh, thank you, Senator Marcos. Senator Wynne Gachalian. Thank you. Thank you. Maraming salamat, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, gusto ko lang husundan yung mga ibang tanong na hindi ho nasasagot. Uh, 
Yusek uh, Guardiola, ilang ba talaga ang aksidente uh, nangyari sa, na nanggaling po sa angkas since, uh, since nag-umpisa po yung pilot uh, study ho ninyo? Uh, thank you po, uh, Senator, Honorable Senator. Ito nga po ang naging problema nung unang report kasi hindi po ma-identify So, ang report pong nakukuha namin sa MMDN, Highway Patrol, are generic accidents. Motorcycle lang po ang nakalagay. So, hindi po naka-indicate kung angkas po yun. That's why, with this new guidelines po we are setting, we coordinated with MMDA, at least for the enforcers, na pag mag issue po ng citation, i-indicate doon kung uh, ride-hailing ride po yung uh, involved in accident or any traffic violation, sir. Hindi ba pag na-aksidente, kinukuha yung pangalan, may description, bakit ho na-aksidente, basic information ho ito, ba't hindi nyo ho na- Tama po, sir. Yung kanina, sinasabi nyo ho na 99% ho, ang uh, sabi ng angkas, 99% ho na safe sila. Eh, natural, sasabihin ho nila yan dahil nang galing sa kanila. Hindi ba trabaho ho ninyo na mag-validate? At meron naman ho tayong mga institusyon tulad ho ng PNP na nakasulat ho doon. Kasi pag, guys, sa Valenzuela, pag na-aksidente ho, nakikita ko may description ho doon eh. O anong kumpanya pa nga, sinusulat ho doon. Ba't hindi niyo ho kinuha yung para basic ho to eh. Basic na dapat ho malaman namin kung itong, uh, itong motorcycle taxi ay safe o hindi. Pero hanggang ngayon, hindi ho masagot-sagot ho ng TWG. Ba't Tama hindi niyo ho kinuha yun? Tama po, sir. Kasi po yung hinihinga ko na po ng mga record yung dating TWG ng mga names ng yung sinasabing 27,000. Wala pong names na sinasubmit yung company. Mga figures lang po ang sinasabi, 27,000. Kaya tanong po, bakit hindi nyo kinuha yung... sa, sa PNP? Bakit hindi nyo kinuha sa PNP para ma-validate? Opo, yung 27,000 po galing po sa record ng angkas. But then, we were asking for the names. Wala pong sinasubmit na names nung 27,000. We don't even know kung 27,000 talaga yan. So how can we validate a record kung figure lang po? Sinabing may 27 riders. Then we can validate with, with MMDA and Highway Patrol. Kasi may pangalan po doon ng mga violators. Kahit sa po sabihin natin hindi naka-indicate doon kung angkas rider ito or, or uh, any motorcycle ride hailing. Kasi generic nga po ang report ng ng ano ng MMD and the Highway Patrol. You said dapat kinuha ho natin to sa PNP. We have to validate. Dahil meron ho sa kanilang impormasyon. At uh, basic ho to para malaman ho natin kung ito ay safe o hindi safe. Tama po sir. Pangalawa dito ho sa inyong resolusyon, meron ho nakasulat ho dito na uh, following activities of the TWG never executed. Meron ho dito deployment of mystery passengers. Sino magde-deploy nito? Yung, yung technical working group po, sir, precisely to malaman po natin yung... yung visitation uh, and conduct, sino ho mag... The technical po, working group po, Nagawa niyo ho to? Hindi po, sir. Bakit niyo hindi nagawa? Sa kakulangan po ng oras, saka sa pag-restrain po sa amin. In restraining order is limited to the cap. Yes. Tama po ba? So, ibig ko sabihin, and yung pagbisita niyo, but mystery shopper, hindi ho to na-restrain. Tama po ba? Uh, maaari pong maulit yung tanong ko. Hindi. In TRO, ay dahil ho sa CAP, tama? Tama po. Walang TRO sa mystery, passenger, visitation, and conduct of field study, tama po ba? Tama, sir. Eh bakit hindi nyo ho ginawa ito kung walang restraining order? Kasi po, ang babasihan ng mystery rider, yung nakarehistro po. Ngayon, dahil tinanggal yung CAP, ibig sabihin yung 27,000 ay tatakbo yun. So, kahit po yung eh, dalawang... Pero ang ibig, ang ibig sabihin, ginawa nyo basihan, na hindi ho nagawa itong mga TWG activities. Pero kayo ho ang may responsibilidad para gawin itong TWG activities. Ginagawa po. Yung pagkukulang nyo ho, pinasa nyo ho. Hindi po, ginagawa po namin. In fact, hinuli po namin yung mga hindi sinusunod na nakalagay dyan through our mystery passengers. Sa Cagayan de Oro po, nakapaghuli kami ng mga hindi sumusunod sa guidelines. Ito po sana, Honorable Senator, Malalaman po yung po kasing proses, ginawa po namin sa guidelines, pinagre-register po namin yung players ng mga riders na dapat mag-participate. Yung po ang basihan ng mystery passenger. Halimbawa ako po ay sumakay sa isang uh, motorcycle hailing. Iti-check ko po yung pangalan niya, iti-check sa technical working group kung registered siya. So doon po, kung registered siya, aalamin po kung safe po ba siyang magpatakbo, is he following the right gears being uh, required by the technical working group, tapos is he 
uh, is a disciplined rider. So, yun po ang pasyal namin. But then, tinanggal po yung kape. So, ibig sabihin, ano po, ang dami po. So, ibig sabihin, free for all. 27,000 tatakbo. Wala po, hindi po nakaregister yan mga yan. How will my mystery passenger know yung iti-check po nila? With all due respect, uh, Yusek, naguguluhan po ako sa sagutun ninyo. Very simple lang naman ho eh. Gawin nyo ho yung mystery passenger, gawin nyo yung visitation, gawin nyo yung field study, dahil wala naman restraining order ho nito. Pwede naman ho natin gawin ito dahil ito ang ginagawa nyong dahilan para po pigilin yung operations ng angkas. Pangalawa ho, ano ho basehan ng CAP? Ano ang, ho naging basehan ho ng CAP? Kagaya po ng uh, sinabi ko kanina, dati po yung sa Uh, unang technical working group is 27,000. Ngayon, sa pag-sali uh, po ng dalawang uh, participants, tinilakyan po natin into 39,000. Para sa Metro Manila po, uh, tagta 10,000 po sila. Sa Metro Cebu po, tagta 3,000, kaya 39,000 po. Ang purpose po nito, kasi study po ito. Kaya para hindi po magulo, pagkuha namin ng mga datos, saka na ipare-register po namin yung mga sa, sa 10,000 na pa- Pa pa-participate nila, i-register po namin. Kasi po, yung CAP po, hindi naman po ito about competition. Para po, makakuha po tayong tamang datos, hindi po magulo ang datos na kukunin namin hindi, for evaluation. Pero, pero ang ginagawa nyo, pinipilit nyo yung pasahero sumakay sa mga ibang motorcycle taxi na hindi naman ho natin alam kung sila ay maayos o hindi. Hayaan nyo nilang maglaban-laban ho sila, pagalingan ho sila. Yan ho ang uh, spirit of competition. Kung lalagyan ho natin ng cup ito, eh parang ang kawawa ho yung pasahirong mapipilitan pumunta doon sa mga hindi naman ho subok na o hindi naman ho kabisado. Kaya ho, walang basihan itong cup ni ho ninyo. Madam Chair, ako naman ho, I was listening intently. At uh, uh, gusto ko lang ho singgundahan yung sinabi ho ni Mr. Deacon na hindi ho ito yung pinaka-ideal na mode of transportation. Pero ang dami ho nagdudusa ho talaga. At sinasungod na ko yung sinabi ko ni Dean Lavinia na karamihan nung sumasakay ito, mga estudyante, sa pag-ikot ko sa mga koleyo, ito ho talaga ang sinasakyan ho nila dahil mabilis at mura. Ngayon, kung huhulihin nyo isa-isa ho sila, ang kawawa ho dito yung mga estudyante. Na wala naman ho basihan. It, ito ho, tama ho sinabi ni, ni Sen. Recto, pag, pag, paghihiganti ho itong ginawa nyo eh. Paghihiganti ho ito. Wala ko kasi basihan to lahat eh. At narinig nyo naman ho yung mga sinabi ng ating mga senador at lahat ho kami sumasangayon na hindi ho tama itong resolution na ginawa ho ninyo dahil kawawa po ang nagnudusa po ang ating mga pasahero. Madam Chair, uh, if, if with the indulgence of uh, my, 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 my good friend, uh, Senator Wynn, I still wanted to hear the basis, uh, Madam Chair, if, if, if we can allow... Uh, LTFRB or perhaps the Philippine competition, sila ba yung may recommendation nitong CAP na to? Kasi yung CAP talaga until now, we're having a hard time figuring out what was really the basis for this CAP. Okay, Philippine Competition Commission. But before that, I think Senator Recto should put on record what he was telling me earlier. Na nakikinig ako sa binagat ni Senator Gachadyan. At uulitin ko na yung sinabi ko sa inyo kanina. Mali-mali na yung ginagawa ng TWG at kayo pa yung galit. <laughs> ha? Wala nga kayong report ngayon eh. Tungkol sa nangyari ng nakarang anim na buwan eh. Anong gusto niyong i-amenda sa batas? Meron ba kayo sinasabi sa amin dito? Wala. Safety ang pinag-uusapan. Then you introduce caps. Di ba? Parang napakalaking pagkakamali. Well, you have the PCCI, I think the Philippine uh, Competition Commission, and uh, may I request, uh, Madam Chair, that after them, pagbigyan naman natin mag, uh, uh, magsalita ang angkas. Okay, so thank you very much. I think much. that's a good suggestion, um, Senator Recto, to put uh, certain crucial issues um, agenda today. Uh, for a discussion. So very crucial also is the Peace Philippine Competition Commission. Go ahead. Your your opinion on that, please. And then later on, a presentation by uh, one of the motorcycle taxi groups. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, good morning to everyone. 
Uh, the Philippine Competition Commission, of course, uh, supports the idea of offering alternatives to our riding public. Um, that, that is why in our position regarding the proposed bills, we've actually, uh, state, we actually state there that um, removing this barrier, this uh, current legislative barrier to the entry of motorcycles should be considered um, just so that our riding public has this option. Um, on the other hand, we also do recognize that there, um, let's say roads and um, thoroughways is a limited resource and that uh, the, the consideration or uh, the safety considerations and the, the use of this limited resource should be um, threshed out by the regulatory office, which supposed to, is supposed to know what they're, uh, what they're to do. But given this, uh, the, Fil the Philippine Competition Commission will only um, say give way to this other policy based on empirical and scientific study. Um, something that would show us that really there is a safety concern. Just another note, um, the LTFRB and the PCC actually had a meeting uh, last week. Uh, during that meeting, we uh, took into consideration the current, well now, um, I guess the last guidelines um, on the TWD, of the TWG. During the discussions, um, we emphasized to the LTFRB that one of the possible options other than setting a cap on each of the uh, possible players is actually the multi-homing, um, a multi-homing policy. Well, this means um, that uh, the, ride, uh, the drivers will have the option to choose um, which provider they would like to go with or even go with all three. This doesn't go beyond what the LTFRB has stated na 39,000 na cap. Kasi hindi rin po naman namin alam ko ano yung basihan nila doon. But we assume that it has some uh, uh, empirical basis na baka ganun lang po talaga ang kaya ng mga, mga kalsada natin na dami ng mga, ng mga motorcycles. Um, so, ang sa amin po, para po uh, mawalan ng ganong um, parang kaba yung mga, mga riders po natin na parang pinipilit sila na dito lang pumunta o dito lang, ito lang ang gamitin na application, we were recommending already the multi-homing policy, which I think is already being used in other jurisdictions. Uh, we have recently just been to Cambodia where there is, uh, they espouse this multi-homing policy. Grab and their local, um, their local uh, provider is used by all the tuk-tuks. So, um, isa po ito sa sinadjust namin, pero yun nga po, katulad po ninyo, nagulat rin po kami na nakansela na po ang TWG today. Um, so, yun po. Uh, we hope that uh, clarify some of so, the... So, Madam Chair, for the record, you did not recommend to LTFRB na gamitin itong uh, cup na ito. Uh, no, no, Madam Chair, we, uh, the first time that uh, the PCC was consulted or had any interaction regarding this matter with LTFRB was just last week. And, and we agree, no? In fact, I think all of us here are, 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 are saying na tama yun. Yung rider, pwede siyang mamili kung anong app. Kasi, uh, the more you promote yung uh, opportunity for our kababayans to, to earn and have a job and be employed, eh, yun ang sinusuportahan ng ating uh, Constitution, Article 8, Section 3, Paragraph 1. Napaka-important yun. So again, I think it's important na madiscuss natin ano ba talaga yung basis. Kasi lahat tayo, pwede naman eh, pwede naman na, na walang cap at lahat, uh, lahat ng... Uh, ng uh, weather angkas, joyride, etc. Pwede akong maging part because at the end of the day, hindi naman ako 8 hours nasa angkas ako or kung kailan lang ako available, dun lang ako po pwedeng uh, uh, mag, mag, maghatid ng uh, passenger. Uh, is that correct, uh, uh, Madam? We, we agree, Madam Chair. Um, actually, I'd like to re-emphasize what Attorney Anton uh, mentioned earlier na sa, sa case po na ito, uh, dalawang sides po ang tinitignan talaga natin. Yung options po ng riders, tsaka yung options po ng mga passengers. So, um, if we, we believe, well, that is what we have been emphasizing before, even during, 
during interviews of one of our commissioners, he had already recommended that um, multi-homing be considered as an alternative. Again, Madam Chair, para matapos lang, yun nga, yung, yung cap, we wanted to hear. Ano talaga yung rational, ano talaga yung basis. Nung inisip po ni Leon, inisip din ho ba nila, for example, yung sinasabi ho dito na 17,000 riders ng angkas, inisip ho ba nila, saan namin dadalin itong mga ito? Uh, talagang ililipat lang namin, automatic ba, lilipat? Kung pwede ba namin silang bigyan ng, ng ibang uh, ruta na kung saan pagkakakitaan? Again, we, we wanted to hear, no? Yung, yung basis talaga nitong cup, it, I think it's important na madiscuss talaga, Madam Chair. Unless LDFRB will tell us right now na hindi nga, nagkamali ho sila and they're not going to uh, do that I don't know if they can really discuss this. It seems they don't even know how they came up with that cap. But anyway, go ahead. Give it a try. Madam Chair, uh, first and foremost po, six months ago, the initial members of the TWG already set a cap po of 27,000. It was only increased to 39,000. However, Madam Chair, uh, as much as we would like to answer the questions. Uulitin ko, okay lang yung increase. Pero yung tatanggalan nyo po, ibang usapan ho yun eh. May 17,000 na matitira eh, na mawawala eh. Possible yes. na mawala ng trabaho. Yes, Your Honor. In as much as we would like to uh, answer the questions relating to the imposition of the cap, we are restrained to answer the, those questions po, considering na may two pending cases po specifically relating to this matter po. Section pwede, pwede pa rin ninyong sabihin dito. Huwag kayo mahiya. Sabihin ninyo. In aid of le legislation to, tinan mo, kapag si, tinan mo si, ano, si GM Garcia, may kaso nga. Yun nga yun. <laughs> and then, 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 um, please, answer it. Uh, kagaya po ng sinabi, sir, yung cap na binasya namin, yung una pa po yun na 27,000. So, ang, ang, Ang binasihan din po namin sa pag-increase to 39,000, yung po ang pag-participate ng dalawa pa. Dinagdagan po natin yan. Ngayon po, inatihati po natin yan para po kasi sa pag-aaral. Hindi pa naman po kasi issue dito ang competition eh. Pag-aaral pa po ito para maging maayos lang po ang pagkuha namin ng datos. Yung po ang purpose na pag-set natin ng cap, pag hati, -hati ano yan, kasi at the end of the day po, hindi naman kasi po competition ang pinag-aaralan namin. Makakuha po kami ng tamang datos para ma-evaluate namin ng maayos. Yun po, Your Honor. So anyway, ito naman progressive yung inyong dapat na approach. Ano? May progressive cap kayo, etc. Are you willing to consider? So there's cer certain directions. No? Number one, pwede bang i-extend yung pi Will you consider extending the pilot after hearing all of the resource persons? Number two, are you willing... Um, to do a multi-home homing, um, multi-homing uh, policy, so that the riders themselves can choose which company to join. So these are two things. You don't have to answer it now. Listen to the others first until you can probably make a commitment. Uh, I everybody's uh, a little enthusiastic. What I need to do now is have Senator Marcos present data just to show you what we have. And then um, Mr. Deacon has to leave, so he has like a short statement. And then Mr. Royeka, and then later on uh, GM Jojo, you want you wanted to add something. So Senator Marcos, go ahead, please. Sing it lang at uh, unting uh, manifestation. Uh, kabisado siguro ni Chairman Guardiola to, yung PNP maliwanag po yung kanilang road crash statistics. And dito sa akin, January 1 to December 31, 2017, taon-taon hanggang 2019. Kompleto naman ng HPG. So, bakit walang datos? Nagtataka ako. At uh, isa pa, yung uh, MMDA, kahit pa paano, nakaproduce ng numero. Ganun din, internationally, minamanmanan pala tayo ng WHO yung road safety ng health organization at may conclusion ang PNP pati ang WHO na ang kinakailangan e eh, helmet, kailangan na mag-training yung driver. Dalawang bagay na sa palagay ko walang kinalaman sa CAP na uh, instead of uh, increasing competition has had the opposite effect. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up, Senator Marcos. Um, because that's been the basis of their... That's stopping the, the pilot program. Apparently, they have no data. Maybe the question would be, does it classify uh, motorcycle taxis 
uh, is there a classification for motorcycle taxis or just? Yes, there are. Um, there are several classifications by the PNP. Uh, may tricycle, motorcycle, e-bike. Meron pang others yung sa probinsya yung mga kurong-kurong, habal-habal at kung ano-anong may passenger attachment. Ayun naman pala eh. Di mabigay nga sa inyo yan. Um, Mr. Swansing, anong... Meron pong data, no? Yung ikagaya nga po ng binanggit ni Senator Marcos. Pero? Pero hindi po naka-segregate, like for example, sa motorcyclo, kung yan ba ay nag-ride, ah, nag nag-motorcycle uh, taxi or private. So, so yun, yun po ang ano eh, yun po dapat ma mahimay. Eh. Merong segregation, sir. Ito nga yung sinasabi niya eh. Ano ire-report yun kung oh. uh, walang pangalan yun na aksidente eh, yung nyo, natin sala? Dapat na naging direksyon, eh di kung hindi ninyo maintindihan, iklaro eh, ninyo. Ang, ang alam mo, di ba, kung gusto may paraan, kung ayaw may dahilan, at parang ayaw ninyo dahil gumaganti kayo. Hindi naman po. Uh, papunta na, actually, papunta na ako kami doon sa detalye ng aming pag-aaral. Eh. No? Kaya lang, ito nga, ang nangyari, na-restrain na kami no, sa aming ginagawa. Marami pa po kami dapat pag-usapan. Actually, ang tama po si Senator Marcos, na ang pag-usapan natin dito is yung motorsiklo at yung rider. Yung ride hailing service provider, on the side issue lang yan eh. No? <clears throat> ang, ang gustong malaman ng Kongreso kung gawin ba nating uh, uh, public utility vehicle ang motorsiklo, paano Sir, natin I'm gagawin? Sorry, you're, you're not contributing to the discussion. Okay? Okay. You're just repeating exactly what we're trying to achieve. And we know that already. Mm -hmm. So no, um, Mr. Deacon, go ahead, please. Thank you again, Madam Chair. I, I think I'm not the only one who sees the irony here that while we're talking about safety here, it's the indecisiveness that's killing us. And traffic is a very serious thing that we should be declaring a war on. There should be of utmost concern. I think it's the greatest threat in the Philippine economy right now is traffic. We're literally grinding ourselves to a halt. And when you declare a war on something, you throw everything you've got at it. And our best weapon right now is tech. But yet we're being held back by rules of engagement written 80 years ago, and we're doing the equivalent of bows and arrows or sticks and stones when our enemy is nuclear. I'm just using these metaphors because traffic is so dynamic and it's moving at a pace that none of us can keep up with. If, it's trans if transport is some kind of a sacred uh, space, I don't know why we are so beholden to a law that was written so many years ago, when even people like the banking sector, if you look at them, that's probably the stiffest bunch of people I know, no offense to bankers, I think they're great, but money we take more seriously than our safety. Yet these people found a way how to do things like e-payments. I'm sure that was a discussion. I'm sure there were problems there too. But I don't remember rallies on the streets. I don't remember hashtags saying save RB RCBC or something like that. We never went through Senate hearings and stuff. We just automatically one day woke up with e-payments. We could say the same thing about the telecoms industry. When Viber and WhatsApp came in, I'm sure that threatened their position. But for the greater good of the public, we somehow just made it happen. We made bigger things happen there. This is what we should be doing to the transport sector because traffic is a disease and we need to fight it. It's a man-made disease with man-made solutions and those solutions, I believe, are resting right there in the bill that you're trying to pass. Thank you, um, Mr. Deacon. Actually, you made quite a point there. If the, if the agency, the bureau, the department is really bent on solving the problem, then they can take proactive steps because, in fact, uh, there's a department order 2015-11 to promote mobility, which allows the DOTR to classify other modes of transportation, if they really want it. But they want an ironclad thing, supposedly, either that or they're just prolonging the, the process. Fine, we are going to legislate just to, to clarify the situation. But again, thank you, and I think now we will proceed with uh, Mr. Rayaka. You have a presentation, sir? Yes, Madam Chair. Um, magandang umaga po, um, Madam Chair. Magandang umaga to the dis distinguished senators po, Senator Recto, Senator Bongo, Senator Grace po, Senator Wynne Gachalian, Senator Amy Marcos, and Senator Joel Villanueva, Senator General Bato. Um, to the friends of the industries and to our honorable regulators, good morning po. Gusto ko lang po, bago pumasok sa presentation, just very short po. Gusto ko lang po linawin na hindi po isang away to sa pagitan ng TWG at ng ANGKAS. 
at sana po talaga yung riding at yung mga nanakay natin yung talagang tunay na uh, mabigyan ng pansin. Ito po ang diskurso ang kinakailangan upang mapalakas ang ating demokrasya. Sa gitna po ng anghang na palitan ng opinion, inaasahan ko po pamilya pa rin po kami uh, na tinuturing na LTFRB, TOTR at ng TWG. Kumbaga po sa isang pamilya, nagkaroon din ng pagkakaiba ng opinion. Pero sana po hindi ibig sabihin, hindi na po kami parte ng pamilya. <clears throat> so thank you po. Ma'am, ang um, problema po kasi po ng pioneering status is talagang alam po namin hindi po siya magiging madali. Pero nang ibabaw po sa amin ang intensyon na gawing profesional ang sistema ng motorsiklo, taxi, um, magkaloob ng ligtas ng alternatibong transportasyon at makapagbigay ng disenting hanap buhay sa ating kapwang Pilipino. So totoo lang po, kahit mawala ang angkas bukas, mananatili pong merong motorcycle taxi, legal man o hindi. Dahil po andyan ang matinding pangailangan ng publiko. Ma'am, in relation po to the issues, isa lang po yung issue namin, yung rider's cap per operator. Wala po kaming issue sa total cap at wala rin po kaming issue na yung uh, multi-homing na sinasad pinapasya po ng uh, PCC na yung driver po pwedeng pumili po sa kahit sinong uh, provider. In fact, uh, I even extended na kahit tatlo pong provider per rider sabay-sabay pwede pong gamitin. Ito po yung nangyayari sa ibang bansa. Actually po, sa lahat po ng bansa, ito po yung nangyayari. In fact, sa ngayon po, marami po sa aming multi-homing na. So, angkas po sila sa umaga, pag rush hour, tapos nilipat po sila sa Lala Move para mag-delivery or sa Quad X or sa ibang mga McDonald's or whatnot. So, ngayon po, ginagawa na po yan ang mga angkas bikers um, to begin with. So, Um, I would like to thank you po, the committee, for allowing me to present. Ito po yung napresenta po namin sa technical working group na pilot updates noong November 20. And during the times po of the technical working group, we presented studies, um, reports, um, willingness to pay surveys, um, FGTs, and also yung aming um, mga riders. Um, to, to sa diskusyon ng TRO, yung TRO po, po, TRO po, gusto ko lang po iklaro, wala po kaming uh, laban sa mga ibang competitors. Sa amin po, gusto lang po namin yung CAP. And yung CAP, yung TRO po ng CAP does not prevent us to give the list um, to the regulators. In fact, hindi, uh, nagbigay po kami ng list, nag-comply po kami sa regulators nung 10,000 na listahan na binigay po nila. Pero wala po sa aking recollection na humingi po yung regulator ng 27,000 po na list. And in fact, kung hihingin po yun, ibibigay po namin yun today. Nabigay na po namin yun sa korte um, na sa kanila po yung listahan ng 27,000 riders. So ngayon po, pasok po tayo sa pilot findings. Um, so ito po yung aming three-year um, operations. Sa three years po na nag-ooperate kami, na train na po namin ng libre na uh, yung mga by applicant natin na 117,000 po na biker applicants. We've had an average failure rate of about 60% and we ended up with about 26,478 bikers. Kasama na po yung deactivation. So just to put things in proper context, no, um, we were not operating for I think more than a, a year. Um, through our three-year journey. So on-off, on-off po ito. So meron pong time na umangat po, meron pong time na deactivate. So iba-iba po siyang snapshots po over the last three years. But this was the summary. So we, it took us about three years to manage an infrastructure to take care of about 26 to 27,000 bikers. Next slide. Doon po sa pilot run statistics, we, set, we sent out Uh, rides, number of rides, accidents po, number of accidents, pati yung feedback mechanism po ng customers. Um, during the first pilot implementation, um, hindi po napag-usapan na magbigay po ng riders list, but we are very much welcome po to, to provide that to the committee, um, both to, the, to Congress and to the technical working group. Gusto ko pong um, ipagmalaki na wala po tayong fatality nung pilot run. And our accident rate has been maintained at 0.003%. So even po sa pagtaas po ng uh, demand po, lalong-lalo na po itong last December, talaga pong nag-maintain po yung ating, uh, um, ating uh, accident rate. So this is a combination po of minor accidents and big, uh, major accidents as well. Next slide. So ma'am, ito po pinaka-importante, Madam Chair. Um, yung 24-hour medical response team po na, na presenta po namin. The problem po kasi with two wheels and four wheels, 
Pag fair wheel po, kahit malubha yung aksidente, pwede pong walang mangyayari dun sa tao sa loob. Ang problema po ng two wheels because of the inherent vulnerability, pag na-accidente po kahit minor, minor accident lang po, there is a possibility na pwedeng magkaroon ng serious injury po yung pasahero. So doon po sa medical response team natin, meron po tayong response time na 30 minutes pag nalaman na po natin yung aksidente. Dito po, ina-assist po ng ating angkas uh, uh, team, yung pasahero, pati yung, uh, yung biker, para po pumunta ng ospital, okay, at wala siyang financial outlay. Unfortunately po, dito po sa Pilipinas, ang sad truth, um, um, sana po walang ma-offend, pag yung motorsiklong driver po ang pumunta sa ospital, marami pong beses, one, na turn away po sila kasi walang down payment. At pangalawa po, hindi po siya na napibigyan ng immediate medical care. So this is why we've learned this over the last three years. Next slide, please. Doon po sa amin accident medical network, meron po tayong 48 uh, EMR uh, trained responders. Hindi lang po to, marami hindi lang po to Red Cross, no? So meron uh, kasama po to na American Heart Association, Emergency Telecommunicator, and Medic First Aid. So meron po silang trauma experience. On top of this, we have 12 doctors on call. So 12 doctors on call po yan from orthopedics to surgery to general practitioner. At meron din po tayong medical resident direct, uh, medical director. Um, eight affiliate hospitals po to, VRP, uh, St. Luke's, Makati Med. So may mga bands po yan. So para po, pagdating po ito ng, ng, ng pasahero na naaksidente, diretso po siya sa surgery kung kinakailangan. Hindi na po humingi ng down payment at hindi na po napapaintay. So meron po tayong um, infrastructure that... You know, we can share this to the other players. No, uh, my commitment. Po, we're here, and we are here to really promote and push safety for the studies. And this is something that we would like to collaborate with, uh, Joyride and Move It. Um, next slide, please. Ito po yung isang insurance issue natin, ma'am, uh, madam chair. Uh, in fact, ito po, salamat po sa, sa committee po ng public services at na-push po yung consortium insurance makipag-negotiate na po sa angkas for the last four or five months na po pero medyo natatagalan na po. The issue po on private insurance is that it is assumed that you have money. So it takes longer for you to claim. Any private insurance po yan. So dapat po talaga sa public utility vehicle, dun po tayo sa consortium, which is PAMI and SACI. So ang naging experience po namin, and marami pong pasahero na walang dokumento, and pag lumalabas po na ospital, hindi na po nila pinafurnish yung mga documents. So only 60% of our claims are actually uh, claimable, and then it takes about an average of five months to process payout. So because of this, next slide please, Nagdagay po kami ng dedicated fund. It is an emergency fund that advances all payments. In fact, I did not want to make this public, no? Because syempre, this is prone to abuse. But yun po talaga yung kinakailangan nating gawin to make sure na lahat po ng aksidente ma-treat. At dapat po, yung iba po kasi, kala mo walang laman or walang, walang sugat pero may internal bleeding. Lahat po yan kailangan i-check. Sometimes we even go beyond the insurance coverage. So meron po tayong discretionary assistance na pinoprovide. Kasi po, marami po sa pasahero natin, isang uh, 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 arawan po yung kanilang sweldo. So pag nabaldado po yan ng isang linggo, ano po yung gagawin nila? para sa pamilya nila. So these are the things that are not covered by the insurance and we hope that we can, you know, uh, uh, make, uh, make it a standard, no? Kasi po, iba po talaga yung trato ng motorsiklo sa kotse. Dapat po talaga magkaiba kasi ang kotse, ang motorsiklo po, talagang may inherent vulnerability. Next slide, please. So basically, ma'am, hindi lang po siya, Madam Chair, sorry, hindi lang po siya sa isang training na kukuha po ito. If you can imagine, there are 18 million motorcycles. Lahat po yan, almost 100%, hindi po dumaan ng formal training. Lahat po yan may mga bad habits. At dun sa three years po namin na experience, marami rin po talagang pasaway. I'll give you one example. Diba? Magaling, magaling po sila while on the clock. Pero pagtapos na, pag pauwi na sila sa bahay at wala na po silang pasahero at sa tape, pananaw nila hindi na sila ang kasbiker, bumabalik po sila sa dati nilang uh, uh, issues. So, Hindi po nila kasalanan yon. This is because of institutional flaws that we've had for the years that we didn't allow them to get tested. We didn't allow them to provide them with free uh, 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 assistance in terms of training. Um, hindi rin naman po nila ma-afford yung mga schools ngayon. 
Pero ang ginawa mo po namin, after nung first training, meron po kaming regular field activities to retrain them. In fact, dun lang po sa pilot program na six months, we, meron po kaming fleet na 27,000. We've retrained 20,000 during the course of the six months. Again, as refresher. This is anywhere from customer service po na uh, rude po yung uh, biker or rude yung customer, hindi nila maayos, lalo na po sa mga overweight issues. Um, pag mga mababang CC, all the way po to reckless driving. So yun po yung mga issues, lalo na po yung mga dumadaan sa sidewalk or even po yung sa pedestrian lane na lang po. So talagang constant po yung training natin at retraining na ginagawa po ng ano. Maa-attest po yun ang mga angkas bikers na nandito ngayon. Next slide please. Yung trainers po namin, we've amped it up. So meron ka po kaming US firm that trains the US Marines for motorcycle safety. They also handled the California and Pennsylvania DMV, which is the largest in the world. No? And one of the most progressive states for motorcycle safety is California. So yung po yung training sa trainers namin on top of the highway patrol group. So lahat po ng trainers namin dumadaan po sa HPG training for the civilian training po na MRST. Next slide. So ito po yung sa CAP, ma'am. I would just like to, um, I guess, lay to rest, no, first and foremost, kung ano po yung konsepto ng ride-sharing economy CAP. Kasi po, um, pag-taxi po, uh, kunyari, nagbagay po kayo ng CAP na 50,000 na taxi, aasahan po natin yun yung taxi, 50,000 po nasa daan. Kasi iba-iba po yung driver yan. Lagari po yan, tatlong driver sa isang taxi. Ang problema po natin sa ride-sharing economy is 70 to 90% of your fleet are part-timers. Hindi mo po empleyado lahat yan. So hindi mo yan mapipilit magtrabaho. In fact, which is why operators, pinakamalaki pong gastos natin other than marketing is incentives we give to bikers para lumabas sa daan ng peak hours. Lalo na po isipin nyo po, Friday payday, ang traffic-traffic, nakamotor sila, marami po dyan tatama rin at hindi na po lalabas. In fact, prinsenta po natin sa unang TWG kung bakit po nag nagkaroon tayo ng rational na payagan yung 27,000 bikers namin. is because yung 27,000 bikers namin, although they are 27,000, at any given time po sa daan, there's only about 5 to 6,000 on the road. So kung babaan mo po yung operator cap down to 10,000, mas lalo pong bababa yung number of riders on the road, especially at the times that you need them. In fact, pag morning peak and evening peak, Ganyan, ayan na po, talaga pong mahirap po mag, magpalabas ng bikers without the incentives. <clears throat> so, next slide. Uh, next slide. Isa pa pong slide. Um, so, yung existing fare po ng matrix ng ANGKAS, ng guidelines, ay galing po sa ANGKAS. And the reason for our fare matrix is, basically, Motorcycle taxi is not meant to be an everyday transportation. It's meant to be used for alternative means of transportation. Traffic po talaga na malubha, mahaba po pila ng MRT, kailangan mo uwi, may emergency ka. In fact, based on our experience, our top, but our top passengers only use it three times a week. Top na po yun. Wala pong nag-aaraw-araw sa amin, um, based po sa experience namin. Yung aming fare matrix, dumaan po yan sa studies, We interviewed 200 habal-habal terminals in Metro Manila. Yes po, there are 200 in Metro Manila alone. Um, hindi ko na po i-mention kung saan. Baka po ma masira po ako sa social media sa mga habal-habal uh, friends natin sa labas. No? And pangalawa po, meron po kaming willingness to, serve, uh, to pay survey. In fact, yung fare matrix namin nagbago-bago po yan over the years. And if you can look at our fare matrix, after 7 kilometers, we jack up the price on a per kilometer because we discourage long rides. Hanggang 5 kilometers ka lang, kung talagang kinakailangan mo 7, 8, kundi sobrang mahal na ng fare mo, mag-taxi ka na lang. So yun po yung rationale behind that. Yung next slide po. Next slide. Uh, next slide. So ito po yung pinakamalaking uh, issue po. No? This is the big bad wolf po ng uh, ride-sharing economy which is tinatawag nating surge pricing, ang tawag po namin dynamic pricing. Now again, let me put this to rest po in terms of our explanation. Surge pricing is not, hindi po siya demon. Okay? It's not the devil. In fact, pag mataas po yung demand um, at mababa po yung drivers, doon po nakikik nakikick in yung surge. And this is done through an algorithm and this is done electronically. And why is this done? It's like incentives that we give as operators. Pero ito automatic. So pag konting drivers on the road, automatic po ginagawa na ng app na tataasan niya yung fare by a, by a, by a multiplier effect 
Tapos, uh, to incentivize drivers to go out para yung pasahero makakabok. Ngayon, ang problema po is, yung four wheels, iba po sa two wheels. Now, um, no offense to the four wheels, no? yung base po ng four wheels, mas malaki po talaga. For example, yung base price po ng four wheels is, for example, 200 or 300 pesos. Pag nag-surge pricing po kayo ng times two, that's an additional 200, 300 pesos that the passenger needs to cough up. Pero like I said, dapat po iba po yung trato ng four-wheel sa two-wheel vehicle kasi yung base price po ng two-wheel mas mababa. So yung kunyaring base price ng two-wheel po, 100 pesos, pag nag-surge pricing po kayo na yung surge pricing po namin na in-implement is 1.3 to 1.5x, you're only talking about an additional 30 pesos and 50 pesos. Now again, this will not sit well with everybody. A lot of people will think this is bad. A lot of people will pay for the convenience. But majority of the public, have we, as we have calibrated this over the last three years, will um, have that sweet spot. So in fact po, um, naging... 2.5 yan dati, 2.8, nagalit po sa amin yung mga commuters, binabaan po namin ng 1.1, 1.2, nagalit naman po yung mga bikers, kaya pumasok po may sa 1.3, 1.5. So again, next, next slide. Um, next slide. One more slide. Next. Yan. So ito po yan. So this is the issue. Pag tinanggal nyo po yung surge pricing, tataas yung demand. With an already existing demand based on our own reports po, no, and Hopefully po the government and the other institutions can validate this. Ang report po namin, there's about 200,000 per day demand um, in the market right now. Um, pag tinanggal niyo po yung search price, tataas po lalo yung demand. And then pag tumaas po yung demand, lalo pong tatama rin yung driver lumabas kasi uh, mababa po yung, uh, yung, yung may, meron po tayong cap. Diba? And wala na pong surge pricing, so sa kanila hindi sila incentivized. So medyo double whammy po yung effect. So for, for us po, dun sa aming uh, humble experience lang po na, na, na in-experience namin, um, it has to be some sort of uh, lever on both sides. If you want to relax on the surge pricing or take it away, then you need to have some liberties with the cap. If you want to put a cap to ensure that hindi po magkalat yung bikers on the road, then there's you have to incentivize bikers some way to be able to 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 ano uh, to uh, go out. So ano po yun eh uh, combination po ng dalawa. And that, ano po sa ating pagsusuri sa dito sa study, malalaman po natin yan um, in terms of how we implement this for for the riding public. So um, that ends for the presentation. So uh, we have uh, detailed reports naman po. Ito po kasi summary. We can submit po to the committee in terms of the uh, yung mga reference materials and how we were able to come up with these types of uh, reporting. Um, um, yun lang po, sir. Uh, sana po hindi po kami ma-blacklist. Uh, sana po kasama po kami sa uh, pag-extension po ng pilota. Um, we have complied um, and we've been complying. Um, even the new TWG requirements, nagko-comply kami. The issue po dun sa Cagayan de Oro and the other areas, we've shut down the service. In fact po, sa Cagayan de Oro po, uh, meron pong existing, um, existing uh, local ordinance po to for habal-habal. So uh, marami naman po itong habal-habal na tumatakbo. Um, and hopefully sana, I will, gusto ko po iikot yung question, dun po sa mga existing na po ng mga LGUs na willing na po, may clamor na po sa patinding pangangailangan, gumawa po sila ng batas ng sarili nila, um, whether rightly or wrongly, baka pwede po rin na natin sila imbitahin sa pilot kasi may supervision naman po ng LGU at ng DOTR dun sa mga lugar na yun. Um, so I was just... You know, sa, you know, sa kabila po ng lahat na nangyari, nandito pa rin po kami at handang makipagtulungan sa LTFRB upang malikha ng maayos ang sistema ng motorcycle taxi. Ang panawagan ko lamang po sa si LTFRB at EWG ay yung alitan po natin, let's set it aside at unahin na po natin yung kapakanan ng mananakay and nandito rin po kami ready to comply with everything that we need. Sa halip, magkaisa po tayong tulungan ng ating mga mambabatas upang makakuha sila ng tamang sapat na datos para makapagbalangkas ng angkop na batas para sa nararapat na regulasyon ng motorcycle taxi service sa bansa. Sa huli, yan lang lam lamang talaga ang hangari ng angkas. At natitiyak ko po na makakatulong dun po ito para sa araw-araw na kalbaryo ng ating mga mananakay. We are one po with the other providers. We have nothing against them. All we are against po is just one thing and one thing only, yung rider's cap po per operator. Ma magandang umaga po at maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Uh, just one clarification. Uh, you mentioned earlier that of your 27,000, roughly about five to 6,000 operate daily in Metro Manila. Yes, yeah. uh, ano po? both na po. Kasama Metro Manila and Cebu. Sa yes. Cebu, okay. Yes. Ilan naman yung habal-habal? Um, sa Metro po, Manila at sa Cebu? Um, with, with all due respect, Senator, your guess is as, best, is as good as mine, but our guess is for every two na nakikita niyo na ang kas, merong sampung habal-habal. Okay. That is my guess. That is okay. just a guess, sir. Ano masasabi ng LTFRB dito? Sa tansya ninyo, sa habal-habal, gano'ng karami yan? We don't have data on that, sir. But uh, it is... Anim na buwan na yung pilot testing natin, hanggang ngayon, walang data tungkol sa habal-habal. Yan ang ginagawa ng DOC. It's not part of the study, sir. Ang pinag-aaral lang po namin, itong tatlong players... Kaya nga po meron tayo doon sa blacklisting para ma-determine natin kung may mga habal-habal na nag-ooperate. But coming to figures, we do not have, honestly, we do not have the okay, figures. Mag-upisa tayo, ilan yung hindi nare-regulate ngayon, di ba? Ilan ba yung habal-habal? Wala kayong data. So wala, wala nag-aaral tungkol sa habal-habal. Kaya nga natin, gumagawa tayo ng batas to legitimize already. Di ba? O pangalawa, ah, uh, Sa buong Southeast Asia, sa Vietnam, pinapayagan ba ang motorsiklo maging taxi? Yes, sir. Oh, sige. Okay. So, sa, sa Thailand, pinapayagan ba? Legal? Pinapayagan po. Sir. Okay. Sa Cambodia? May mga law na rin po sila dyan. Sir. Meron na rin. Okay. Sa Indonesia, Meron. Meron din, sir. O, halos sa lahat. Meron na. Pilipinas ang nauhuli. Di ba? Opo, sir. Kaya maliwan na kinakailangan talaga magpasa tayo ng batas tungkol dito. Yes, sir. Okay? Um, could you submit to this committee what your recommendations are? Halimbawa, may mga panukala dito, one of which is mine, as the principal author. Okay? Simple amendment lang ang nandito sa panukala ko. And I think in many of the other bills, simple amendment lang. Okay? May mga prinisent kanina dito na certain standards. Dapat ba ma-include natin yan sa panukalang batas? Yes, sir. Okay? So sumasang-ayong kayo sa presentation ng angkas kanina? Yes, sir. No question, sir. Sa okay, but we'll be blacklist. Ay, because of the, what we're talking about, sir, what we're talking about, I know what we're talking about. I know what study. we're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so can the DOTR, not only the TWG, submit to this committee your recommendations, how you want the law to look like? What possible amendments? Yes, sir. Okay. You will. Can the players as well in the industry, not only uncast, but also uh, possible new players, Nolly? Would you be willing to submit to the committee uh, possible amendments on the proposed legislation, setting certain parameters and maybe standards? I don't know if you should include capitalization. Huh? Thank Would you, you be willing uh, to submit? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Actually, Your Honor, under the new guidelines, yes. we are required as new participants to submit our report to the TWG monthly. Yes. And we are ready to uh, present our recommendations to the TWG. Yes. Um, and so we will be prepared to present that as well to the committee. Yeah. Uh, in so what I'm asking for now is certain amendments to the proposed legislation. Y yes, Your Honor. We okay. will. Uh, I'm sure we you will have submit. a copy of all our bills, right? That, this Many is of based them are on simple amendments. The question is, do, you, do we add standards for the DOTR to follow? Actually, Your Honor, when we looked at the bills that uh, have been filed uh, yes. before this committee, we noticed that indeed the uh, amendments are simple, Correct. and we wanted to uh, perhaps expand it a bit Correct. just so that the safety Correct. requirements are incorporated in the That's law. That's precisely the point. Yes, Your Honor. So we will be waiting for your possible suggestions. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Now, at this juncture, I'd like to recognize first Senator Villanueva. Remember, this is all in aid of legislation. Okay. So, Senator Villanueva, after Senator Villanueva, we will first have again um, Senator Aimee, then Senator Wynn, then we will recognize a resource person, so, with your permission. 
Senator Villanueva. Thank, thank you, Mr. Senate President Pro Tempore. I, I will just be uh, very quick and uh, let, let, let me just uh, ask some clarificatory questions to, uh, to the uh, presentation made by uh, Ancas. Uh, I, I would just like to be uh, clarified as to the classification of uh, your riders as a worker, no? as uh, um, a, a, a ride uh, hailing up uh, riders, regular employees, part-timers of uh, the ride uh, hailing up. Do they have a quota as to uh, the number of rides that they, that they they have to take every day? Uh, I'm sure you made mention na hindi naman lahat nakat nakaka uh, gawa ng, for example, eight hours a day. Paano naman kung sobra naman yung hours na binibigay, baka naman na uh, nasa sacrifice naman yung safety ng ating mga passengers. May, may I uh, may, may I ask may I may I uh, Maybe hear from the from from, from uh, Mr. Thank George uh, Royega. Thank thank you, Senator Villanueva, um, for that question. Um, accreditation po yung platform, uh, I guess, system na ginagamit po namin. So they are not employees, regular or otherwise. So they're just accredited the flat platform. Tapos dun po um, meron silang ability to book rides. Um, but for our um, uh, uh, maximum number of hours, we cap it po at ten hours as part of the technical working group recommendation and studies. Pero sinastudy pa rin po to. Um, a lot of our part-timers, nag-average po sila ng about four hours. Um, two hours in the morning, two hours at night. So basically, yung po yung parang nagiging uh, patakaran nila po um, sa, sa bride sharing. But you made mention a while ago about the insurance. Walang pinipili kung ilan yung oras na binibigay nila sa trabaho when it comes to insurance? So we don't have any quotas, sir, um, in any of the benefits. Uh, wala po tayong quota dun sa insurance at wala po siyang uh, uh, for in behalf po yun to, to the driver and to the passenger. So ang kinakailangan lang po, may, uh, yung pasahero, uh, yung, yung, pa, yung biker nakarehistro po sa, and accredited po sa platform natin. And what's your take? Uh, siguro tanungin din natin ng uh, Joyride and other companies. What's your take doon sa pagkakaroon o paglimita ng mga riders to be accredited to only one uh, ride hailing up? Um, yun po sir, yun po yung kine-question namin kung pwede po sana maging pool po yan para po makapagpili po ng uh, freely po yung mga riders or even multiple po. In fact, all over the world po, um, lahat po ng riders, uh, hindi po exclusive sa isang platform, they have multi-homing, yung ikang ang tinatawag ng PCC. So yun po yung aming uh, uh, suggestion at sana po uh, yun yung preferred po namin. Sir Nolly, Ayala, would you share the same sentiment? Uh, thank you, Senator uh, Villanueva. Sir, um, uh, right now, I just want to put it very clearly. No? We are evaluating all of these guidelines because we are part of a study, Senator. We believe that when we were uh, included in this program, it was made very clear to us that we are only part of a study. And that's why uh, this was the framework for our participation. Uh, we see the logic behind it because we feel that there is a need for validating information coming from only one player. And so the need for additional operators was uh, made by the TWG so that they could actually validate the information. An example here, uh, Your Honor, is, for instance, uh, the price surge. Is it really uh, necessary? Or have we proven that the price surge can still be removed and yet it can still be effective? Uh, we talk about the uh, capacity of the bikes. Um, we are limited to a certain number of uh, the limit of the bikes to about 150 cc. Is this viable or is there really a need to go to 200? So there are many points of the study that we have been also including in our operations as part of the validation. Now on, 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 the, um, on the issue of uh, multiple platforms, uh, Your Honor, we have uh, no objection to that. but. As far as we're concerned, at this point in the study, it might be difficult to have multiple platforms uh, and verify certain information if there will be Can you elaborate multiple. on that, uh, that particular uh, statement that, that you made, that there might be some, some problem? Alam niyo po kasi, um, syempre iba-iba po ang aming mga, um, ang mga mobile applications po namin. Halimbawa, 
Yeah. Eh, hindi pa handa. Opo, hindi po pare-pareho. Kumbaga, wala pong actual na standard, wala pong regulation. So, meron pong uh, ibang application na walang kilometrahe. Yung iba po, merong kilometrahe. Uh, meron pong uh, applications na merong deactivation uh, applications. Iba-iba po yung uh, standard at this time. So, uh, without those regulations and standards, it will be very difficult for us to actually um, uh, have a apples-to-apples -apples comparison. So, siguro po pag nandun na yung actual standards, then maybe the multiple platforms for riders can be implemented. Uh, first of all, let me put on record that I think all of us would agree the importance of having uh, uh, additional uh, operators, new operators. Uh, we wanted to promote competition. Yung uh, PCC already uh, made mention, and I think they are uh, recommending itong uh, magkaroon ng... Uh, uh, yung binabanggit natin na hindi malimitahan yung ating mga riders to be accredited to only uh, one rider hailing uh, app. Because I think it's important to note that uh, uh, it should not uh, affect the uh, rider's freedom to do freelance work. Dito sa Senado, we have been uh, uh, doing a lot of things in order to strengthen itong uh, freelance uh, work. And uh, I think, importante ito na maisama ng uh, LTFRB sa kanilang uh, pag-aaral. Uh, sir, we are not against LTFRB. We are here to support you. We wanted to know uh, how we can help you. And uh, I think yung mga data and information na naririyan, uh, kailangan gamitin ho talaga natin. Um, ito pong pagmumonitor po nung uh, rider as to the working hours. Uh, kanina, nag, medyo naano ako nung binanggit na merong cap na 10 hours. Medyo mabigat ho yata yun, no? but still it's a study. Pa, paano na, na monitor ng uh, LDFRB itong uh, ganitong uh, mga situations? Uh, thank you, Your Honor, sir. Uh, yung po ang nakapalaman dito lahat sa, technica, uh, sa guidelines natin, even the uh, yung pag-monitor po ng kanilang apps, nakalagay din po rito, pati po yung uh, pag-monitor ng workout nila, which is actually not 10 hours, 8 hours po. Kasi, uh, kasi inaano po namin yung kakayahan ng rider na hindi naman siya masyado pagod for safety reason din po yun. So yung pong mga detalya po yan, yun po sana ang mga i-inspecte natin uh, tungkol naman po doon sa... Uh, Ibang bagay na ano po, iyon po kaya po tayo maglalagay ng uh, mystery passengers para on the spot po ma-check natin yung mga yun. Thank you. Uh, tinanong mo natin yun para masiguro natin na napoprotektahan natin yung uh, mga passengers. Last but not the least siguro na gusto kong i i i itanong sa LTFRB. Yung pag-set nyo ng policy to uh, limit the number of riders that are able to work, uh, parang... Sa, sa ngayon ho, especially after hearing yung mga resource persons natin, you, are you now willing to reconsider that position na sa isa lang talaga sila, sa isang uh, 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 kumpanya lang pwede yung rider natin? Kasi ho, uh, babanggitin ko ulit, kanina binanggit ko na yung uh, sinasabi ng uh, Article 8, Section 3, Paragraph 1, the state shall afford full protection of labor, local and overseas, organize and unorganized, and promote full employment. Uh, pagbibigay ng uh, hanap buhay o trabaho sa ating uh, mga kababayan. Kasi pag ginawa ho natin ito, malilimitahan. And uh, narinig natin yung PCC kanina, ito rin ho yung recommendation. So are you now uh, reconsidering your position? Your Honor, can I answer that? Uh, Bert Swansing po. Yun tungkol po doon sa multiple uh, homing, no? Ang tinitingnan po kasi namin yan, bawa kung merong insidente, tapos uh, yung rider na yun is naka doon sa tatlong uh, ride hailing service provider. Pag nagsuspindi kami, ang gagawin noon, lilipat lang siya doon sa isa pang ride hailing service provider. Remember po, no? Napakadali, sir, na, na i-blacklist yun? Di po. Di ba napakadali i-blacklist yung rider na yun? Kaya ito po ang kasing gagawin natin dyan, eh, no? Yun hong, yun, hong ride, uh, yun hong motorcycle rider, kinakailangan nakaregister siya sa isang ride-hailing service provider. No? 
bago bago yan ipoprocess yung application niya as a motorcycle taxi. No? Ay, ano eh, man, meron kagaya, kagaya nga po na sinabi ko kanina, ang focus sana natin dito is yung motorcycle at yung rider. Eh. Yung ride hailing service provider, side issue lang yan, but they have a malaki ang task nila, no? In, fa in fact, pagdating sa monitoring, sila ang inaasahan namin na mag-monitor doon sa mga ride hailing, uh, uh, riders na nirecommenda nila sa amin na maging uh, motorcycle taxi. Sir, sorry ha, but hindi uh, ko alam kung yung mga kasama ko naintindihan kayo kasi ako hindi ko naintindihan kung anong hirap na po pwede yung isang rider ay pwede sa joyride, pwede rin dun sa angkas. Uh, And again, I'm just asking that question, will you reconsider now your position after hearing all this? There's a constitutional provision here that uh, we already mentioned, which is the highest law of the land. Yes, uh, uh, may I? I okay. in chair, sorry, I couldn't Sir, recognize please proceed. all of you. I'm Attorney the, Delgra, please proceed. Uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, I'm speaking as uh, chair of LTFRB because I'm not involved with the technical working group. But in answer to the question of Senator oh, Villanueva, oh. tama po yung policy nyo that the rider has a choice to which app he wants. In fact, meron po tayong tinatawag na dual or multiple uppers. So, ibig sabihin po, kagaya nung nangyayari ngayon sa TNDS, uh, we actually have created a supply base from which supply base any of the TNDS operator can choose which app to get themselves accredited. So, they have a choice. Okay. And ultimately, the consumer or the commuters will have a choice which uh, ride-hailing apps will, they would like to get connected to. Thank, thank and, you, and Attorney Delta. The same thank also you for with, that clarification. Uh, so it's, it's, it's there. Uh, the, the, the chair would like me to, to stop asking questions, so I will, I will no longer pursue my uh, follow-up questions. No, Senator Joel, it's not that. Uh, let's go through... Uh, uh, The, the cycle, and then if you have more questions later, we can certainly accommodate your inputs once again. Senator? Marcos. Yes, maraming salamat po sa ating chairwoman. Bilang senador na nakaangkas hanggang senado kay uh, Mayor Sara, dahil humarurot kami buong kampanya, Luzon, Visayas at Mindanao, eh talagang maliwanag na pro-angkas, pro-ride hailing, pro-joyride po, pro uh, go jack and grab ako. Uh, Shana, our uh, chair Guardiola will reconsider the stoppage he has imposed on biker hailing apps, being that they're the best stopgap measure we have in the absence of public transport. Ang akin lamang, nakakapagtaka, kapag may pasyente na pagkarami-rami ng sakit, hindi naman natin pinapatay kasi give up na tayo. Ang ginagawa, gagamutin isa-isa. Yun dapat ang gagawin natin sa mga angkas na violations, sa pagpasok ng joyride, sa pagpasok ng lahat, pag-delay ng grab bike na pumasok. Huwag natin silang patayin, kundi gamutin ang mga mali-mali at ang mga sakit. So, unang-una, mukhang lahat ng ahensya may datos. Pwera lang ang LTFRB. Dahil maliwanag yung PNP, yung MMDA, WHO, hindi nagkulang sa datos. In fact, may rekomendasyon na sila ng training at helmet. Ikalawa, sino ba yung expert talaga sa TWG na yan? Meron ba sa tropang yan, may karanasan, may experience dyan. Alam ko si Chair Highway Patrol. May experience po kayo, pero kailanman hindi naman nagpatakbo ng anumang transport company. So dapat, yung malilit na players mag-start ng malit din. Para unti-unti, palakihin natin at pagtibayin. Ikatlo, ako lang sa iba't ibang bill, napakarami pong bill, na napakasimple, konting amendment lamang sa Commonwealth Act. Subalit, ang sa akin, sana dagdagan rin natin ng role ng LGU. Kasi yung LGU na ngayon ang nagmomonitor ng tricycle, kinakailangan na yung prangkisa ibigay na rin sa LGU para mamonitor nila ng masusing at kanilang responsibilidad ang uh, mga mali-mali. So, eto lang ang akin, uh, nananawagan po ako sa LTFRB, pati na rin sa DOTR, na kung maaari ipagpatuloy natin ang uh, bike hailing apps at uh, wag natin patayin ang pasyente.
Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Meron lang po ako isang follow-up question sa PCC. Uh, pagtitignan natin yung industriya sa pangkabuan, uh, itong cap na inilagay po ng TWG, ito ba ay isang sound economic, sound competition policy? Ito ba ay tama pagtitignan natin from the standpoint of competition? Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, so, sa perspective po ng PCC, syempre, um, generally, we don't recommend setting uh, caps on uh, players uh, to enter the market. Ang gusto po natin is as much as possible kung sino ang may abilidad at may kakayanan na mag-participate sa merkado, mabigyan po sila ng kakayanan para kumbaga, let, let the best man win kumbaga. So, kaya nga siya kompetisyon. Gusto natin na kung sino yung pinaka magagaling uh, at kumbaga, tama ang presyohan, sila ang pipili, pipiliin ng consumer. So, para po sa PCC, in general po talaga, is uh, we don't like setting caps uh, in the, for entrants in the market. On the other hand po, the Philippine Competition Commission, uh, in its mandate po to review uh, regulations, policies, and bills, uh, we do have to balance out uh, our uh, competition policy with the uh, equally important policies of other regulatory agencies. So that is why uh, we also kumbaga, give way of course, if the question is on safety or on um, uh, the security of our consumers, uh, we would give way only if there is sufficient empirical data, scientific um, basis for us to consider the other regulations. But so, in general, po, yun po ang But for this particular industry, looking at the entire sector, at narinig nyo naman yung mga comments, Tama ba yung cap na inilagay ng gobyerno dito sa industriya na ito from a competition standpoint? Dahil kayo ang guardian of competition. Eh. Uh, at kahit yung mga gobyerno, kahit na meron silang ganitong policy, meron kayong kakayahan at kapangarihan okay. na sabihin sa kanila na hindi tama ito. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, siguro po i-explain ko po na last week nga po, nagpunta sa amin ng LTFRB, Para explain po sa amin ang reasoning behind this uh, this uh, regulation that they that they put up or uh, sorry the TWG um, they explain to us that this is merely an experiment this is um, something that is supposed to be short lived and because of that uh, the PCC as of now has not delved into the how do I say the the policy in itself. Hindi so, ang suggestion ko sa PCC, tignan itong sitwasyon dahil tumatakbo na ang tumatakbo na eh, nag-ooperate na itong mga motorcycle taxis. At uh, kung hindi tama itong policy, at tingin ko hindi tama itong policy, ang kawawa dito ay yung mga commuters natin, yung mga mananakay natin. So, time is of the essence no? from a competition standpoint. Since nag-meeting na ho kayo, dapat tignan nyo na ho kung tama ito o hindi dahil sa tingin ko hindi tama. Ito pwede kong tawagin legalized cartel. No? Dinilegalize natin yung cartel, pinagahati-hati natin yung merkado sa kanila. Kung ako yung bago, tuwang-tuwa ako dahil kahit na hindi pa ready yung app ko, hindi pa ready ako, eh meron na akong assurance na 10,000 riders. Sino ang kawawa doon? Ang mer yung, yung mananakay, yung mga commuters. So, tignan natin kaagad ito dahil tingin ko legalized cartel itong ginagawa natin. Uh, th thank you, uh, Senator. We will, I will relate to my principles. Okay. Um, yan, I Actually, I would like to hear from Chairman Delgra. Nga, wait. Chairman Delgra, um, uh, GM Garcia, Tapos, uh, kanina pa kasi itong si Mr. Ano nga, hindi ko makita yung card ninyo. Mr. Si Mr. Go. Ng, tapos, uh, siguro from the other groups later. Okay, can you keep it uh, concise so that we can cover as much? Because this is our first day back also. We need to prepare the session hall um, soon. So, Chairman, uh, Attorney Delgra. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we just want to confirm uh, the statement from PCC that we did met them, uh, the technical working group as well as LTFRB, me representing as LTFRB at the time also. And then uh, there was a, because there were also reports that came out no, uh, from PCC regarding having to understand what's going on on the motorcycle taxi from the point of view of running it or from the point of view of competition. So we made it clear to them that the issue of competition comes into play when it legitimizes competition. What that means is that if there is a law that allows competition right now, as mentioned, and precisely why there are pending bills in both houses of Congress to legitimize motorcycle taxi as a public mode of public transportation. So having said that, that can be taken into consideration perhaps uh, by the technical working group, but as consistently mentioned by the technical working group, this is but an experimental study, meaning it, uh, the technical working group themselves set certain parameters. It may or may not consider the issue of competition, but if, they're go if we're going to push competition at this point in time, we need to assume a, a, a legitimate basis for competition, which is a law allowing motorcycle taxi. And that's the whole point of this study. Uh, having said that, uh, that's precisely why uh, I think the, the reason why they put a cap, obviously there is an issue about that, no? And in fact, uh, if I may say, even uh, uh, ANCAS uh, took uh, vehement objection to that, vehement to a point that they have to file uh, two similar petitions raising the same issue, uh, you know, uh, covering the same uh, 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 parties for that matter, because they want to state that sila yung, according to them, sila yung uh, entitled to that, no? or uh, legitimate uh, participant to that. Uh, they even cited uh, some basis. But nevertheless, uh, going back to the technical working group, that's precisely the point of the technical working group, that this is all about having to conduct a study. And at some point in time, if I may say, I did mention this, uh, during the, uh, I was invited uh, during the first meeting of the technical working group meeting with the three participants in December 22, 2019. I did mention that we appreciate your coming in to participate in the study and having invested their time and resources in this study. But just like any study, it will come to an end. Hopefully, before that end comes, there would already be a law that allows the motorcycle taxi as a legitimate mode of public transport. Chairman so Delgay, that, yes, yes, we appreciate your point of view on the matter uh, for reminding us the whole point of this hearing is for us to be able to come up with a law eventually. But again, a well-crafted law is always based on data and observation and also the proper, uh, the proper research. And we won't be able to come up with that meaningful, again, and effective law without the studies being submitted to us. So again, I will appeal and then towards the end, I will ask for your categorical answer. This panel, I think we are unanimous in our, in our opinion that the study must continue because now we are telling you, you should actually collate all of the data, the accident reports, if your basis is for the safety of the public. So Yon, we need an answer later on if you will consider this uh, to extend the pilot program. Um, Jim Garcia and then Mr. Go. Ma'am, a few questions lang ako kasi medyo nalilito na rin po ako. If we're going to push through with the pilot program, kasi nasa batas ka na bawal yung motorcycle na maging taxi, no? Actually, na, na, nakukwestiyon na rin yung mandato namin kasi nung nag-pilot program tayo, ginawang public transport yung motorcycle, kailangan hulihin namin yan kasi sa batas, hindi siya pwede. So, maybe just to protect all of us, kung kaya ng maglabas ng resolution, kasi as of, as of today, hindi talaga pwede. Kasi may, may, may batas tayo, pero we fully support the motorcycle taxi. Sabi mo, uh, uh, as need, kailangan talaga. But how can we, we 
do a TWG ng pilot na tumatakbo yan, eh bawal nga. Who can protect us? Yes. Okay. It, okay. yes. Ganito lang yun. Um, nagawa na ninyo ng ilang buwan eh. Hindi naman kayo pinapatigil ng korte. Pag dumating sa punto, pinapatigil kayo ng korte, na kung, kung, kung pinapatigil nga kayo ng korte, ay para ipagpatuloy ninyo ang programa, hindi para hindi ituloy ang programa. At saka, merong kapangyarihan, kung hindi ako nagkakamali, ang Department of Transportation to consider the legalization of motorcycle taxis in the same way it recognized new forms of transport service under the Department Order 2015-11 to promote mobility. Di ba yung mga, yung Grab, yung Uber? Di ba? Kasama din naman yan doon. Ngayon, kung gagamitin nyo ngayon na hindi pwede kasi wala namang batas eh, eh pinayagan nga ninyo kaya nga pag-aaral eh. Uh, Attorney Delgra. If I may, uh, Madam Chair, just a quick uh, uh, comment on that statement. Tama po na uh, we need to distinguish the TNC, the Transport Network Corporation, from the TNVS, yung mismong uh, mot motor vehicle that connects the rider Uh, the driver with the passenger. Wala pong pinagbabawal doon. And, and for that matter, yung TNC, uh, like Grab, uh, here na, wala pong pinagbabawal doon. Ang pinagbabawal lang yung paggamit ng motorsiklo as a mode of public transport. Uh, so yun lang pong kinaklaro natin. Eh pero nga, private vehicles din yung mga yon na ginawang TNC. So ibig sabihin, naghanap kayo ng paraan na gawing legal ito. Alam nyo, malira naman na parang tinututukan nyo ng baril sa ulo ang mga nasa kongreso para ipasa yung batas na samantalang wala pa kayong, man, wala pa kayong datos na sinusumite. Submit nyo muna yon. O, oh, sasabihin nyo, pipigilin kayo ng korte. Kung bukas pinigil kayo ng korte na gawin yan, yun, may dahilan talaga kayo. Pero ngayon wala naman eh. Pagtumating yung before yung nag-TRO kasi sa Mandalu yung yan eh. Yung dati yung sa Angkas, di ba? Nanguhuli kami nun eh. Tapos sinita kami na i-content na naman kami kasi ba't daw kami nanguhuli? Eh may TRO mo. That, yeah. Ba't kaya nalito talaga kami si MMDA eh. Sabi ko, ano, ano ang gagawin namin? Sinasabihan kami na manguhuli kasi wala sa batas yan, bawal ang... But we support ha, the motorcycle. Sino nagsasabi sa inyo na wala sa batas? Yung korte? Oh, yung, di ba yung TRO sa inyo? Yung TRO lang. The TRO says na pwede silang tumuloy. O, oh, eh, kaya nga eh. Yung sinasabi nyo kasi, ang sinasabi ni Attorney Delgra, eh kasi wala sa batas nga yan. Eh kaso nga pati nga yung korte, na may malawak na pag-unawa sa pangangailangan. Ito'y pag-aaral pa nga. Napasok nga ninyo yung TNC, sir. Eh, alam mo, um, I think, Senator Ralph, you, you wanted to add something? No. Yeah, I support the position of the chair. Yeah. Uh, to begin with, number one. Huh? Number two, um, ilan ba ang ulitin natin, ha? yung kanina tanong, ha? o LTFRB, Attorney Delgra, ilan ba sumasakay sa habal-habal ngayon? Illegal. <laughs> Daan libo? There is really no data because these are colorum. Oh, so there's no data. Okay. Basically, kolorong po oh, sila lang. Pero nakikita ba ninyo araw-araw? Ah, yes, Kasi ito yung pinag-uusapan natin ngayon, nauhulihin ang general manager ng MMDA. Di ba? O sa tansya ninyo, Jojo, Sir. Uh, ilan ang sumasakay ng habal-habal? Sa sir. tapat ng MMDA mismo? Yeah. Actually, sir, may, ang, ang sa dami... kato kanto ng EDSA meron? Meron, meron. Sir, hinuhuli namin yan. Nakikita ba ninyo? Nakikita, hinuhuli namin yan, sir. O sa tansya ninyo, ilan? I don't have the exact number, Daan sir. Daan libo? Uh, thousands. Pero thousands. Pero yung mga thousands, yeah. Ha? Uh, thousands. Palagay ko may abot ng isang daan libo yan sa Metro Manila. May kami where I was at during that time of uh, Atoy ni Lisada noon. May hinuli uh, tayo noon, yung habal-habal na group. Kaya nga, sir, doon kami nagtataka eh. Na, eto, huli natin. That is, that, that is the implication. Yes. That is the implication of what you're saying. Huhulihin namin lahat ito. Ha? Paihirapan ninyo lahat ng commuter. Sir, hindi namin pinahirapan. Kasi it's the law na sinabi na bawal eh. If There are many ways that, of interpreting yes, the law. There are many ways of interpreting the law. Yes, sir. Katulad ng mga grab na yan and all that. Nung una, sabi niyo sa amin, gumawa kami ng batas tungkol dyan. Yes, sir. And then later, sabi, hindi pwede pala. 
Lumabot tayo ng bagong batas tungkol dyan. Ah, hindi. Yeah. Di ba? Okay. Alam ko mas masalimuot yung motor. Hindi. Sa katunayan nga, pwede naman. Lokal na lang lahat eh. Wala nang pakialam ang LDFRB eh. Because ayon din sa batas, Tama. ang tricycle or motorcycle wow. sa lokal. Sir, that, that Kaya hindi that dapat kayo mag sa Cagayan de Oro kung meron sila doon dahil pinapahintulutan yeah. ng lokal. Tama. So, Di ba? I Alam mo, gusto ko yung opinion ng former LTFRB board member. Ha? Kasi to help us interpret the law, meron bang discretion? Yeah, Attorney Lazada. Kasi wala pa nga batas ang Kongreso. Pero with the experiences in the past. Ma'am. Thank you, Madam Chair. For the TNCs and TNBS, DOTR was able to come up with a department mm. order because uh, private uh, cars, if you look at the law, private, private cars are not allowed to be for hire. That is, however, nakagawa ho ng, ang nauna ho kasi DOTC, then time ni Abaya, and it, mm. is, it was, re, it was um, fine tuned by DOTR, allowing TNBS nakalagay ho doon. Uh, my, my point here, uh, Madam Chair, is the pilot implementation is a crucial tool for Congress to come up with a, legis uh, with a legislative action judiciously. So, uh, pwedeng gawin ho ng LTFRB, if I may suggest, you come out already with the fair structure ng mga sasakyan ng mga motorcyclo if you will allow them the search. You put in the parameters. So the implementation is the proper implementation that may guide Congress in coming up, in coming out with the law. But while we are awaiting legislation, let the DO come out para malegalize po itong lahat. I agree. Let us do a common base, a pool. Let us learn from what happens sa Grab and Uber. If there will be several ride-hailing apps who will mushroom, we will add 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. Dadami ho yung motorsiklo. But if it is the pool, then I guess, I believe LTFRB can get the data from ANCAS. What is the percentage of the daily bookings? How many, what is the percentage of those served bookings? How many are unserved? What is the target percentage to serve the riding public because for Grab and Uber, it was a 65,000 poll to be able to serve a 75% uh, request for bookings. Uh, but this poll has to be revisited because the churning rate, yung sinasabi ni George kanina, if you have 10,000, not all will be online. Kasi ang iba, may trabaho nga. Ang iba, gusto mag -rest because this is initiative led by the private sector. We cannot mandate them 24-7 kayong magiging public utility vehicle. That's why it is very crucial that there is a thorough consultation among all the stakeholders here to come out with that pool. And then what are the parameters? So when you implement the pilot, everybody is on the same page. So when you make a report to Congress, Maganda na ho yung report na yun. Also, department order lang palang kailangan. Oh, so, um, ganito ah. Uh, kayo ba, hindi, wala pa bang department order sa TWG na pinirmahan ang DOTR? Wala pa kayo. Meron po ba? May department order ba si Secretary Tugaden na nagsasabing um, pinapayagan ang technical working group na magkaroon ng pilot study. Meron ba? Meron po, ma'am. Okay. That in itself would allow the program to continue without violating the law, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. O, oh, yun naman pala eh. So, ano ba yung discussion natin dito? Alam ba ninyo, MMDA, alam ba ninyo, DOTR, na mas dadami ang trabaho ninyo pag tinanggal ninyo pilot program na to at lahat yan ay nag-fly ng kolorum at illegal. Imbis, mas magiging madali at maayos ang trabaho kung kunin na lang ninyo ang datos kesa isuspindi ninyo ang programa. Yun lang naman yun. Um, Mr. Go, I promised you. I'm, I'm sorry. It took so long. Go ahead. It's okay, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Good afternoon to the members of the committee. Uh, Madam Chair, unang-una, 
gusto ko po kayong pasalamatan, lalo na yung buong committee, dahil yung expression ng halos lahat ng mga senador kanina at pati kay mga naiwan, ay to continue with the pilot project. Dahil nakakatakot po na babahala ang Dealers Association dahil doon sa announcement naman ng, uh, ni, ng TWG na patitigil yung pilot program. Dahil alam nyo naman ang negative news that can be sensationalized. At kapag yung mga bumibili ng motor on an installment basis at ma marinig po, covered po tayo ng media, sasabihin eh, sinab in-announce ng uh, bagong technical working group na ang recommendation nila ay patigil itong pilot project, negative po ang effect. Secondly, Madam Chair, I would like to seek your committee siguro, kayo na siguro ang magdig deeper, kailan po lumabas yung special department order na binabago tulad nga po na sinabi ni Senator Amy Marcos, kailan nilabas yung special department order na tinanggal lahat ng mga unang unang resource person at, at technical working group na members. Kasi mula po, mula po nag, nagbago yung, yung composition na yon lahat po ng gulo, lahat po ng confusion ay naglabasan na po. Yun lang po, Madam Chair. Thank you uh, for your uh, very short but meaningful opinion on the matter, Mr. Go. Actually, yung isa pa dito na ang pwede natin Ingin ay ang department order nga na magsasabing ito ay dapat ituloy para ma-protection ma na naman at hindi na naman ipatawag si GM Garcia ng korte. I think, may, I think nagkaka-phobia ka eh. Mas, trabaho mo yan, dapat ha. Uh, ano, uh, sabi ni Senator Wynn. Okay, okay, actually. Senator Recto. Yeah, sorry for that, for this, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, just a final word uh, from this representation before I also have my lunch. I'm sure everyone wants to have their lunch. No? Uh, may we have a copy of all the department orders, okay, of the DOTR creating the TWG? Yes, sir. Okay, minutes of your meeting of yes, the sir. previous TWG? Yes, sir. And the current TWG, uh, and an explanation from the secretary, bakit binago? ang membership ng TWG. Ha? At bakit nung una may kinatawa ng Senado sa TWG at ang Kongreso? Nagtatanong ako sa aking opisina kung nakatanggap na tayo ng imbitasyon. Mm -hmm. Ang una sagot sa akin, baka ma maaring mali, ay wala kami natatanggap na imbitasyon. Dahil ito nga ay in aid of legislation. Dahil tayo isa ka nagpanukala nito. No? So, at ang naririnig natin, parang wala naman masyadong meeting ang TWG. Parang isa lang ang uh, nagdidikta. Bakit di natin gawin transparent yung TWG? Ha? Isama natin yung mga ibang resource persons dito. Isama yung Philippine Competition Commission. Yung mga representante ng mga commuters. Para lahat na pag-uusapan na mabuti, hindi pa dali-dali. Ah, kaya na kukorte eh. Kaya na titiyaro eh. Di ba? Tapos sa sasayang oras sa inyo, nasasayang oras namin dito, naghihirin pa tayo sa Senado. Tapos may takutan pa na bukas isasara natin lahat. Ah, isipin ninyo na mabuti yung sinasabi ninyo. Daan-daan libo ang mga pektuan dyan. No? So, could we have a copy of all this? orders from the department, uh, uh, pati yung mga records ng TWG, kailang kayo nag-meeting, kailang kayo nag-hearing, kailang kayo nag-public consultation, sinong inimbitahan ninyo, para patunayan sa amin na transparent yung takbo ng TWG. Yes. Pwede ba kami mabigyan ng kopya nun? Yes, sir. Thank in you fact, very much. The, the order is in the report submitted, sir, that on tab D, yung special orders, sir. And, uh, submitted sir. saan? Dito po, in our report. Sa Senado? Sir, list. Yes, sir. Lahat? Kompleto na? No, for that particular, ano, sir, question of uh, the creation of uh, TWG. No, 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 no. Hinihingi ko lahat, but the minutes of your meeting. Oh, yes, sir. We Wala will do. nakikita ni isa. Yes, sir, we will do. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Senator Recto, um, Attorney Inton, may dadagdag ba kayo? 
Dati lang po. Dati kayong LTFRB ba? Opo, dati din po tayong board member. Anong year? Ako po yung hinalinan ni board member. Uh, ah, okay. Opo. Go ahead. Uh, siya po pumalit sa akin. A better board member. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. So, hindi, ano, ano, teka mo na. Malili po. Opa. May dadagdag ka ba? Opo. Ano po? Opo, meron po. Ah, konti lang po. Yung po kasing uh, sinasabi na bawal yung motosiklo as public transportation, I think it's not really an exact uh, ano eh, description sa batas. Ang sinabi ng batas, bawal maging public utility vehicle ang sasakyang rehistradong private. Kaya kapag ka yung motosiklo, kaya bawal kasi pribado siyang rehistrado. Kaya nga po yun sa TNC, TNVS, nagkaroon ng issue yan kasi yung mga TNVS privately registered. Then, binibigyan ng prangkisa. Yun po, nawala po yun. Kaya dito po, kaya po sinasabing bawal because registered as private yung motosiklo. Take the case of tricycles. Tricycles na bibigyan ng prangkisa because of the local government. And then, it is uh, nagkaroon po ng uh, nare-register na na public vehicle. So, yun lang po ang uh, tingin ko po. Ano, probably LTO po, malaki maitutulong dito sa problema nito. Thank you for clarifying that. Uh, Ms. Hamon, bago ako may, may, ako naman may tatanungin dito kasi pagkatapos. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, simply lang po, hinahanap din po namin ang participation namin sa TWG kasi mga tatlong meetings kasama kami, tapos nung ginawa yung bagong department order, observer status na lang yung mga civil society. So, uh, second the motion, it has to be a multi-stakeholder. Uh, Thank you, ma'am. Actually, ganito ha, ang hihingin ko sa angkas, joyride, ano nga yung isa? Move it. Bigay ninyo yung, ano, yung specification ng mga motorsiklo na ligtas na kung gagawa tayo ng batas, kunyari ilalagay na, sorry ah, hindi ka tulad ni Senator Aimee, hindi ako rider, no? Pero kayong makakaalam kung anong capacity dapat ng motorsiklo at the minimum. Of course, technology changes. So we'll, we'll set a minimum standard that we will put there in the law um, This may be subject to change uh, depending on uh, technology, and it can be just a decision issued by the LTFRB, something like that. Because, Shepre, you cannot always uh, amend the law that easily to catch up with technology. So we have to allow the departments the discretion to increase the requirement or 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 maybe re uh, keep the status quo. Now. Before I, before we end this hearing, gusto kong tanungin si TW Chair Guardiola. Alam nyo, the, alam naman niyo may hearing tayo today, di ba? Tapos bigla na lang naglabas kayo ng desisyon bago pa tayo nagkaroon ng konsultasyon. Siguro naman po sa araw na itong narinig ninyo yung opinion ng iba't ibang mga resource persons na hindi ninyo nasama dun sa huling technical working group. At alam ko, inaalala rin ninyo yung violation din sa batas na naklaro naman na pwedeng department order. Uh, narinig din naman ninyo yung mga sinasabi ng senador na siguro meron talagang dahilan para ipagpatuloy natin ang programa. Can I get your opinion on whether you will recommend now the continuation of the pilot testing program? Uh, Madam Senator, Madam Chairman, as uh, being recommended by Honorable Senators and of course by uh, the resource person, we will immediately convene and we, we, we will submit the report to the development of our Secretary, Madam. Thank you, sir. But I know that you will convene, but your statement was by next week it will already be implemented, di ba? Na you're going to suspend the program, therefore they will be apprehended, the riders will be apprehended. So are you willing to do it now, this week? I think you should do it this week so that if you have a recommendation, you can preempt that, um, what do you call this, apprehensions. Yes, ma'am, we will do it this week. Yes, I, I think that would be very wise and, and also 
expect more lawsuits, in fact, if you stop the program. So it's counterproductive. Pero siguro naman, with all of the participants, eh, bago naman mag-lawsuit, I know you're probably frustrated and you're exhausting all legal means, but I think communication is key. If you don't, if you feel that you're being ignored, Please, our offices are willing to, to talk to you if you have a valid reason uh, to seek further legal uh, recourses. I, if you don't like to go to my office, you can go to Senator Wynn's office <laughs> uh, or any other senator in the, who was in this hearing today. So, Dean, do you have any additional points? Alam mo, to si Dean Tony Lavinia, talagang advocate ito eh. So, no uh, um, ulterior no, motive. Because uh, we, we really focus today on, on the immediate, no? But it's, I will just submit to your office uh, suggestions on the law. I mean, I, I, well, I'm a strong supporter of ANCAS and other motorcycle taxis. I'm also a strong supporter of strong regulation, including environmental regulations moving to, to the future. And I mean, because it's important to look at this Ah, also from a future's point of view. So we'll just submit it to your office. Alam nyo, uh, tama, di ba, yung Clean Air Act uh, natin eh, kailangan yung mga motorsiklo natin, yung capacity, um, yung makina maayos. Eh, yun nga yung gusto ko sa angkas. Alam mo, nakita ko yung frustration eh. Sa pag-aaral na to, ginamit din kayo ng gobyerno. Hindi ba? Kasi ang gusto ng gobyerno, maayos ang inyong training program. So, you standardized everything. Tapos, Pagdating na ng ano, parang kayo ang nagtanim, <laughs> kayo ang uh, nag-ani, kayo nagbayo, kayo nagsaing, tapos hindi pa kayo pinakain. <laughs> um, hindi naman tama yon. This chair and the committee encourages competition because we've seen how it is to have a monopoly. Mas mahirap pang i-regulate yan, pagkapitay sa patalim. So we encourage that. But I think we are rewarding them negatively, our participants, by saying, oh, ito, ito yung cap per ano, biglang equal distribution, whereas hindi pa naman tested ang capability ng iba. O di okay if they can fill it out, pero yun nga tama, dapat merong, ano nga to, dapat bahala ang mga riders pumili kung saan sila gusto nila gusto. Yun yung aking opinion. Okay, I'm not an expert. So, we will continue this. Um, I think, I won't anymore read this very long um, summary. I think alam na natin yan. Basta ang kailangan natin, ipagpatuloy ninyo ang inyong consultation at isuspend muna ninyo yung pagbuwag ng pilot program. I think dapat ipagpatuloy. And that's the burning um, concern of our countrymen right now is to make sure that the public has that alternative mode of transportation. So maraming salamat po. This hearing is suspended. Thank you.